let me know if anybody can see or hear me right now. There we go. Hey, Lenina, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're having a good day. Oh, as I catch the camera, <laughs> keeping from falling over. There we go. Gust of wind. Gotta watch out for those. But, uh, welcome, Lenina. It's good to see you. Hope you're having a good day. Yeah, I can see and hear me. Good stuff. Dr. Irrefutable. Hello to you. I don't recognize that username. Um, welcome, welcome. Jody Fish, good to see you too. Uh, shoot, I should probably do a little introduction for when this later goes up on YouTube, hopefully. Welcome to Paleontologizing. Uh, my name is Danny Anduza. I work on dinosaurs. I'm out digging dinosaurs here in western Wyoming right now. Uh, kind of near the town of like Green River, working in the late Cretaceous Almond Formation. And uh, we're digging up a dinosaur right now, and you'll get to see that in just a couple minutes. But we're waiting for people to pop in. But uh, the rain did stop, Dr. Irrefutable. It did. Thank goodness. Cheerful bloke, good to see you. Yeah. Dyson Dinosaur, thank you for the well wishes. Sorry you're not doing field work. But uh, appreciate you being here. Yeah, Kodali, what's shaking? Yeah. Um, oh, and Jody Fish, I'm sorry that happened, but it's good to see you. Yeah, and it is a beautiful sunny day. Holy cow. Let me show you around. Just turn the camera around a little bit. This is where I'm working. Out here with the crew with Nick Longrich and Ethan Cowgill and a number of other volunteers. And, uh, yeah, we're out in western Wyoming. The rain has finally let up. The wind hasn't been too bad. The bugs have not been bothering us today. It's been a good day in terms of external conditions and in terms of what we've been working on too. We've got a ceratopsian dinosaur. Those of you who are in the know, that's a horned dinosaur. Think triceratops, but just a little bit earlier. Um, yeah, that's uh, what we're going to be looking at in just a couple minutes. But we'll wait for some more people to trickle in here. Swims with whales. I'm glad you think this is so cool. This is a ton of fun. So, I'm so glad I can finally share this with you. Um, it's been a couple of years in the making, fieldwork streams on the regular like this, so pretty excited. Yeah. Um, yeah, and V2, rain is definitely a problem in working with a dig, because, you know, we're working in all of these sedimentary rocks. And sedimentary rocks, when they get wet, they get mucky. And also, you don't want to be digging up a dinosaur in the rain because the bone, which has been there for tens of millions of years, be incredibly delicate and when it's suddenly exposed to the air it can start falling apart you throw rain into the mix it gets even worse so yeah yeah and also just nobody likes getting rained on when they're out in the wilderness you know we don't have access to a shower or even really like electricity or anything like that so i don't know it's kind of like when you go out camping and it just rains and rains and rains it's no fun it's, it's absolutely the same out here, but even more so, because it messes with the fossils, and that's what we're out here for. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Dink Doop, do you have any geologists that travel with you? Are you trained in geology? So, yeah, we've, we've got training in geology. Um, I don't know if there are any uh, self-identifying geologists who are going to be out with us this summer. We're all, all, I think, paleontologists and then, you know, volunteers. Um, I don't know if we have anybody who has geology specifically as, uh, as their, uh, you know, as their title, geologist. But yeah, you've got to know a lot about geology if you want to do this kind of work. Um, or you have to be willing to learn a lot of geology, I guess I should say. Um, yeah, it's all about the rocks. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Anyway. Uh, hello, hello, everybody. And again, welcome to paleontologizing as people trickle in. See any cool critters today? I've seen a lot of lizards today, which I was excited about. They look like fence lizards, like I have back home. Like blue belly lizards, the kids would call them in California. Um, I don't know if the males here have blue bellies, but it's, it's a similar kind of critter. Uh, fence lizard. And then, what else did I see? I saw a, a really cool swallow earlier. I think it may have been a cliff swallow. It was big. Um, 
turning and banking in the wind. It was really neat. And uh, yeah, here's some meadow larks and some rock wrens and stuff. You get a few flies buzzing around, but uh, yeah, saw some pronghorn yesterday. I'm sure we're going to see lots and lots of cool critters as the days and weeks go on. So yeah, we're going to be digging absolutely go, go, foe. We're going to be digging in just a minute or two. Yeah, an okay to play. The sky is a very nice color today. Nice and blue. It's been very gray lately, so this is, this makes me happy. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so welcome, welcome, everybody. Well, I'm going to turn the camera around. We're going to go see Nick over there, and uh, we're going to take a look at our dinosaur that we're digging up. Um. Just so that everybody knows, uh, this is not going to look like you might imagine a dinosaur dig to look. Have you ever seen the movie Jurassic Park or seen other depictions of dinosaur digs in popular media? Usually there's like the beautiful skeleton all laid out in bass relief on the ground. You know, this is not going to be like that. It's going to be a lot less distinctive looking. But that's the way it works in real life. So, yeah, I uh, don't want you to be disappointed by that, but... Keep in mind, this is even cooler because this is the real thing. So yeah, yeah. Hollywood glitz ain't real life. Exactly, ding tube. Exactly, yeah. And soft loose sand. Well, Claire Burr, usually that's not the case, but here we actually do have very, very soft matrix, very soft sediment surrounding the bones. We got really lucky with this one, with this site that Nick found. So uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's uh, let's go take a look at that. Shorten up the tripod here. There's our Starlink setup. That's the reason I can broadcast to you right now. Cross your fingers, it continues to work. And then there's Nick there. Hey, Nick. And this is Nick Longrich. This is from Bristol, right? Uh, Bath. I Bath, think. I'm sorry. Get yeah. minutes away, close enough. <laughs> yeah, and here we've got part of the skull of a dinosaur. Uh, Ceratopsian dinosaurs, one of these big horned dinosaurs. And uh, again, I said it wasn't going to look like terribly much, but we've kind of pedestaled around it a bit. And we're going to be putting a top jacket on this thing. So I've talked many, many times about building plaster jackets and showing you videos about that, you know, over the past months and years, really. You know, that's one of the key parts of doing dinosaur field work is building jackets. And we're going to be doing that in... Hopefully less than an hour. Ethan said he'd be back in like 40 minutes. Oh, fantastic. So, yeah, yeah. But very, very cool. And the sediment here is just extraordinarily easy to work. We got really, really lucky with this site. I mean, this is a fantastic finding, not just because of what it is, but finding it in this lithology. This is, this is pretty killer. So, yeah, yeah. Very, very cool. Um... See if we got any questions yet. Yeah. Oh, we've got a question for you, Nick. Do you know Paul Barrett? <laughs> oh, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, and are we going to show it live? Yeah, we'll see. If, if Ethan gets here on time and brings the supplies up and the battery lasts long enough, maybe we'll do that. I might go for a little walk with you guys, too, in just a little bit. Um, but yeah. We're just going to hang out here for a little while, and, and Nick, if you wouldn't mind doing some Q&A with me, that would be yeah, uh, sure. Uh, that'd be a lot of fun. So yeah. You could give a little explainer about what we got here. Yeah, if you want to, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah so this is kind of a, this is sort of textbook paleontology, and of course it rarely goes like the textbooks, but in this case it did, as we were just kind of walking along here looking for bone. Uh, I guess about 20 feet down the cliff, just a, I found a hunk of bone, and a couple other pieces went to it. Kind of stopped, looked around, found more pieces, went back, got the team. And we just sort of followed up the hill, and I got about 10 feet, I initially got about 10 feet before I couldn't find more, but they were able to kind of keep going up further and further, and got to this level where we stopped finding more bone, we started finding larger pieces, uh, like we found this piece here in a great big chunk of frill. Nice, can you hold that up to the camera? Yeah, yeah, so this Classic is... Classic ceratopsian texture. Huh? Yeah, yeah, so what you have here is this very rugose texture and these kind of like veins there where the blood vessels would pass... Uh, uh, on, on top of the bone and under the skin of the frill. So this is a piece of frill. So this is the surface texture of the frill. It's very gnarly, veiny textures. They get older. 
Here's the back of the frill, so it's the same same texture, and they're kind of converging there. So we've got a bit from the edge of the frill, and it's it's, it's very very thick. Uh, we have other pieces even thicker than this, and it's as thick or thicker than in Triceratops. So this is either a very large animal, or it's got a very thick frill, or probably both of these. So it's just like uh, massive frill bones, and uh, and yeah, from a single piece of bone, you can tell if you have a Ceratopsian, sometimes a Hadrosaur, a Theropod has a distinct texture. So you can find these fragments. When we found this stuff, it was like we were pretty excited because it, we saw we had a Ceratopsian. Uh, and again, it, you know, it, it could kind of fail at any, any uh, <laughs> have a series of steps that you go yeah. through. And it, it could fail anywhere, anywhere along the line. You could find a piece of bone and find no more. You could fall up the hill and not find it. Uh, you could dig back in and not find anything. Uh, but yesterday we came up here and just poking around, a, a piece popped out of the hill, and we could we, uh, a piece in situ, so we could tell that we had a bone going into the ground. So then we kind of clean off the surface, we, we go back into the hill, take off the overburden, and then we kind of trench around it so we can pop this all off in a jacket. Uh, the digging tools, it's been, you know, basically these have been kind of the main tools, is a knife and a paintbrush. <laughs> Uh, and sometimes maybe a, I mean, you know, like a screwdriver and all to kind of break up the sediments a bit. Uh, it is incredibly friable sediment, and when it's wet, you can carve through it kind of like cold butter almost. So you can actually use, be literally carved around this edge <laughs> with a knife to define that. Yeah, look at how just vertical that is. That's yeah, just very rare in a quarry do, we, do you get sediment that's yeah. this obliging. It's Years ago when I was a grad student, I, I worked some bones like this, but it wasn't nearly as interesting material. It's just like hadrosaur ribs. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's fantastic. So the, the other key bit is the, the bits that we've been finding uh, appear to come from the back of the frill, the, the bone called the parietal bone. And that's very distinctive because in these horned dinosaurs, they have all these like different arrangements of, of hornlets back there and spikes and hooks and so on and so forth. So it's kind of the one bone that you need to diagnose a species. And uh, that's you know, the one bone we've got. It's I mean, the that's one bone we've incredibly got. Incredibly lucky. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, anything, any number of things could have gone wrong. It could have been that if this bone was coming out of the hill in the wrong direction, the back would have been worn off. We wouldn't have those distinctive hornlets. Uh, it might have been the type of thing where we found the. You know, we found the maxilla first and had to take the entire hill down to find the parietal or maybe didn't even find it at all. So the one bone we really wanted to get from this animal we found first. Uh, we do have other bones going into the hills. So we might have more skull bones. But even without them, we've got a good idea of what we have here. Uh, you know, originally the... Uh, Barnum Brown was out here working in the 19... Was it 1930s? 30s. 37, I think he was out oh, here, yeah. Yeah, close to 100 years ago he was yeah. out here. He found a nearly complete skull out here and it was missing the parietal. So we're still not entirely <laughs> sure what it is. It's probably a new species, but without the parietal, it's hard to say. Uh -huh. We've got no the parietal overlap, yeah. here. And our animal might be the same thing as Barnum Brown's thing. It's conceivable it's something different. Uh, you know, if we find more bones, we'll be able to see if they overlap and if they're the same thing or not. But yeah, it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty awesome thing to find on the first day of field work for sure, or, or in any day. But <laughs> well, it, it's it's you know usually that the way that's the other way it goes is often you find something like this on the very last day. Exactly. Yeah. And you, all you can do is bury it until <laughs> next year and hope it's uh, you know hope it's safe. I hope you have funding uh, for the next year to yeah, come back. Yeah. Yeah. But we came um, yeah. the very first day of field work. We found like. You know, the, it was the one thing we were all really hoping to find was a Ceratopsian out here. And we found a Ceratopsian and the one bone we really wanted to get. So it's like, uh, I don't know, I'll probably never have any find quite this lucky ever again in my career. So I think I'm going to retire right now. You know, quit on a high note. Uh, you know, just go out like that. I don't know. Yeah. Really, I mean, extraordinary that this, this has happened. And it's so, I'm so happy I'm able to share this with all of you back home. I hope you realize how lucky you are watching this right now. This is... Uh, yeah. No. We, we could not have staged this better, <laughs> like with like a budget of millions. And really extraordinary. Scope it out for a month. We could have come out here for two months and tried to scope it out and find something <laughs> like this, and not have been able to show you this. And we just stumbled into it in one day. So yeah, we, it's like we we couldn't have we could not have set this up if it seems too perfect. It's like yeah, we we couldn't have done something this perfect if we tried. <laughs> yeah. Would you maybe want to uh, point out a few of the different? high points of the anatomy here. Oh, yeah. It's going to be difficult for the camera to really pick that up, but yeah, it's, know, just... it's it's hard even for me to tell what's going on. Um, Still covered by a lot of matrix and we've got this kind of irony stuff kind of over the surface of the, some of the bones. So it's going to be tricky to see. Yeah. So this is a bit of bone here. This is like an iron stone over the bone, which kind of looks like a pain in the ass, but if you prep it off, the bone tends to be very, very well preserved under these iron stone rinds. Mm -hmm. So it's probably going to be beautiful when you prep it. That's another nice thing going on here. Uh, this is one of the little, what they call epoxipitals, one of these little hornlets on the back of the frill. Maybe another one there. Could be one buried under there. Seen as one there, maybe over here. And they have anywhere from like, uh, 
six to ten of these on the back of the frill. I don't know what orientation we have. Uh, if we have six, we should have about half the parietal. It could be huh. the squamosal is over here, and mm -hmm. that could be coming off. Uh, it could be that it goes over there. I'm not really sure, and it kind of depends on what we have. So we don't know if this is left or right side. We don't know parietal, if it's left yeah. or right. It's kind of convex, which implies to me, since the epoxipitals tend to curve forward a bit, I mm -hmm. think it might be that we've right got side? the underside of the frill. Oh, interesting. So I think it might be upside down. Uh, we huh. also have over here, we have some more pieces that were kind of coming out of the ground. And uh, this is another piece of frill. And again, here we have the, the top of the frill and the bottom of the frill kind of converging. We're going to the edges there. And this is a little element called an epoxipital that's fused on there. I mean, this is pretty remarkable. You can actually see the lines of fusion. So you can see here's the edge of the, the bone, which I think is probably the squamosal, but it could be the parietal. And there's this little hornlet fusing on there. And that, that even tells us like how old this animal is. It's a mature individual because these little hornlets fuse on at the very end of the uh, development. Uh, so this is a very old animal. And so we seem to have a second bone here or maybe a third bone over there. And which is, I mean, again, it, it's fantastic. It's, it's you know, we, the one bone we have that we really want, but we could have, you know, uh, a fairly decent chunk or even a complete skull under this hill. <laughs> Um, although you can see here, we've got these great big sandstone blocks. <laughs> so if it's going back 20 feet, it's going to be a lot of work taking this whole thing down. Oh yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess we have to talk to the BLM to make sure we're not like depriving poor little lizards and jackrabbits of their <laughs> habitat. Um, but I, I'll probably survive. Yeah. Um, they're tough critters. Yeah, yeah. They're used to the desert out here. They can deal with a, I don't know. Yeah. Deal with us being out here. But very, very cool. And just based on this element right here, if you had to make a wild guess as to how large the animal would be. In its entirety, I mean, it's it's a big critter. I I would guess it it's, I mean, it's the thickness of the frill. It's massive. It's like you know, it might not. It's conceivable. It's just got a very chunky frill and isn't quite as big as Triceratops. But it wouldn't surprise me if this animal is like five or ten tons. Holy cow! You yeah. know, uh, I mean, maybe. Yeah, it's it's depending on what it is. Uh, you know, there's there's animals around about this time, a, a little bit younger than this Ankyceratops, gets pretty big, not quite Triceratops size, mm -hmm. but pushing it. And some of the skulls are a little small, but the big ones, like the holotype that, of Ankyceratops, also found by Brown, I think, um, is approaching Triceratops in size. So it would <laughs> not surprise me. Um, so it's substan it, it, uh, my guess is this is substantially larger than animals like Pentaceratops and Chasmosaurus that we're seeing uh, just a few million years earlier. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's pretty awesome. So yeah, right now we've just got a prospecting permit. So basically we can dig a hole roughly this big and we can collect this. Um, but we got to talk to the Bureau of Land Management and if they say that, that we can go ahead and keep digging, uh, we might go ahead and do that this season. Or we might have to come back next year and then just get rid of a lot of this stuff back here, dig in as far as we can and see if we can get more of the skull or maybe even some post crania, you know, bones from behind the skull, from the rest of the skeleton. Um, Ceratopsy and postcrania really don't get enough attention, but uh, it's a good thing to have, and we don't want to leave anything like that. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, no, really, really exciting, and I'm so glad everyone was able to witness this. Um, yeah, and somebody wanted to know: is, does that mean that there could be more? There could very well be more underneath this. Um, yeah, we just got to see. But we're, we've been very lucky so far in that. This rock is so easy to work, and this looks like it's going to be easy to take out, too. It's not like we've got, you know, a pickup sticks arrangement with all these different elements or anything. It's close to the road, too. What, 500 yeah. feet or something? I mean, that's another great thing. And downhill to the road, downhill, which is yeah. exactly what you want. Holy it's cow. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great site. A dream it's, site. Yeah, it's, it's like, I mean, any number of things could have gone wrong. The parietal might not have been here. It could have been, like, under 50 feet of sandstone. It could have been 10 miles from the road, but, like... You know, everything kind of came into alignment here, so it's like, uh, I don't know, bless the gods of paleo or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Knock on wood, nothing's gone wrong so far. I know, uh, yeah. You know. <laughs> Maybe this is our reward for having to put up with all lightning. the... Uh... <laughs> that, kind of, that restores the karmic balance. <laughs> it's like, this is like our, our reward for uh, putting up with all that rain and everything earlier. And... Yeah. I don't know. Watch our camp just get destroyed by a storm or something later. Ugh, I shouldn't say that, but you never know. Um, yeah, yeah. So in probably about half an hour or so, hopefully, Ethan will be back with some supplies. He's picking up some more plaster so that we can jacket this thing. Um, yeah, if anybody's not familiar with that concept, we uh, 
we do a thing called jacketing in the field where we make kind of a protective cocoon around the bones in order to to hold them in place so they don't fall apart when we take them back to the laboratory so uh yeah jacket building is would you say it's more of a science or an art i don't know it's it's a craft i'd say it's like <laughs> it's, carpentry it's a good way to put it yeah yeah it's, and uh, everybody's got their own techniques too um so it's uh yeah yeah the, the basics is you want to separate your layers you can get your plaster mm -hmm. off so you put down something like wet maybe, paper towel yeah wet paper towels is pretty yeah. good i think in the old days they used newspaper yep and then you get some burlap straps typically there's other fibers people use these days but traditionally burlap mm -hmm. and you soak those in water you 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 cover them in plaster and you kind of wrap it around there and it's basically the way you used to use, make casts for broken bones. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, I want to say it was Marsh the first. I want to say it was Marsh's crews yeah. that were the first to invent that, yeah. Yeah, around yeah. 100 years ago, and there's been surprisingly little uh, innovation in the technology since. Seriously, yeah. I mean, in yeah. a lot of ways, our technology has not changed. I mean, Marsh would have, you know, been basically, dig, you know, his men would have been digging up stuff in much the same way. The, mm -hmm. I think the big advance since then has been the glues. Exactly, yeah. A lot better. The PVAs that we've got. The, yeah, yeah. Which we've actually had some trouble with so far today and yesterday yeah. but um yeah we don't know why our glue is behaving all strange but yeah if anyone out there knows why our, why our uh, glue bar won't, won't won't dissolve yeah uh, but we should have that resolved pretty soon we're gonna ethan's gonna drive back to salt lake at some point and pick up some other glue um yeah. but yeah yeah oh very cool now you said you said soak the strips before you put plaster on them do you see? So you, uh, I think most. Of the, I've, I was taught to wet them. I mean, me you, too. And that's okay, the thing. Okay. When I was working with uh, with Jim and Don last summer, they're okay. like, "No, no, you put it into the plaster dry." What are you doing? <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I don't feel like it absorbs as well if the the burlap is not wet first. That, but, that's what I was taught. I was taught yeah. it that way. Uh huh. That's how we always did it with Museum of the Rockies yeah. and everything. But you know, so there, there you go. Somebody asked last one of the recent pot. Uh, broadcast about traditions and uh -huh. rituals maybe that's a ritual i don't know it's just like this is the way we've always done it tradition yeah. you know how dare you you know try and are you crazy you know, get out of camp i don't i don't know it is there's little bits of wisdom and lore that are kind of passed on and mm -hmm. some of them are very useful and some of them might just be superstition for all i know uh yeah i've always been taught wet wet burlap but yeah who knows got to make that burlap tea first and then you dare your crew members to drink it yeah yeah um uh, <laughs> But yeah, yeah, exciting stuff. Thank you so much, Nick, for explaining yeah, sure. this and everything. Um, yeah, you're pretty good on camera. I, everybody's impressed. Okay, so, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I, as a lecturer, I'm used to like yammering in front of students and kind of making <laughs> stuff up. So uh, <laughs> That's much like streaming. It's, yeah, it's yeah. a very similar kind of skill set, I think. Um, yeah, although streaming is probably a little bit less serious in its tone. But uh, everybody's saying thank you. So yeah, okay, sure, thank you, yeah. Nick. Yeah. We're going to go walk around a little bit. I'm going to stay within range of the Starlink right there. And, uh, yeah, I'll do some Q&A and everything and let Nick work on this or just kind of hang out. We're basically just kind of waiting to be able to jacket this thing right now. Um, we want to make sure we get a lid over it so it's protected overnight. And then tomorrow, hopefully, we can flip it, jacket the underside, and then pull it out. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's see how we're doing on... Our battery right here, I don't have the solar panel set up, but we're still at 92%. That's pretty decent. Yeah. So yeah, but let me, uh, if anybody has asked a question, which I didn't cover yet, if you wouldn't mind maybe retyping it or copying and pasting it, uh, that'd be great. I'd love to answer your questions for you, but um, can't always do that when I'm trying to manage seven different things at once. But uh, let's just set the camera down right here and let's just hang out for a little while. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, what's up with the turtle? Quinn's turtle found the other day. Uh, any updates? Yeah. So we've got two turtles now from the same site. And uh, yeah, I think we might go and collect them. I don't know, our priority right now is really this Ceratopsian, this horned dinosaur. Um, I'm trying to find a place for the camera to stand up properly. So, patience everyone. I appreciate that. <laughs> Let me just hold it. Ah, this is falling over. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It's funny, like, you find one thing and then 
something that seemed like a priority yesterday is no longer as high a priority. <laughs> We're so, so lucky that this ceratopsian has turned out to be, uh, yeah, this is like a dream so far, which is really nice. But yeah, we might end up taking out the turtle tomorrow. Could even be today after we top jacket this thing. We'll have to see. But that turtle site has also turned into what we call a micro site. Um, not because the site itself is small. Well, this one is kind of small. Um, but because we find micro vertebrates in it. Little bits of, uh, of different critters that kind of tell us what this environment was like. What's your cast of characters there? So find little shark teeth, fish teeth, fish scales. Um, we've got a little tooth from, or several little teeth from a, what you might call like a saw skate. So a chondrichthian fish related to like sharks and stingrays and stuff. Um, might be kind of similar to like a guitar fish, if you know what that is. Uh, yeah, yeah. And if we get really lucky, maybe we'll even find some dinosaur teeth or some, some mammal teeth would be pretty incredible too. Um, that would be very interesting and, uh probably worth a paper in and of itself. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that's all from, uh, from Quinn's turtle site. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and Shark, was this a saltwater area? Says, okay to play? Excellent question, and I'm glad you asked it. So the thing is, when you think of sharks nowadays, in our modern day, they're mostly marine critters, you know? They're swimming around in saltwater. That you know, sharks didn't used to be almost marine exclusive. You used to have all kinds of different freshwater sharks during the age of dinosaurs. Um, they're probably fairly little guys, like most of them less than a meter or two long. Um, maybe significantly less than a meter. But yeah, freshwater sharks are pretty common. Uh, things like hybodont sharks, a group that's now extinct. But if any of you remember, uh, if you've seen Walking with Dinosaurs, in the Cruel Sea episode, there's Hybotus, that genus of shark. It's got like a little spiky spine in front of its dorsal fin. Um, that's a hybodont shark, pretty big one. Um, we get little ones that were in freshwater in a lot of these environments that dinosaurs lived in too. So, uh, yeah, yeah. This area itself, these rocks that we're digging in, the almond formation, uh, these are terrestrial rocks, so they're from the land, but this is right on the banks, right on the, the coast, basically, of the Western Interior Seaway, um, back during the late Cretaceous. So there is this, I wish I'd brought my map to show you, I forgot it in the car, but there was a shallow sea that intersected, got bisected, I guess, North America. Hopefully that wind isn't too bad. Uh, bisected North America in the late Cretaceous kind of split North America into two subcontinents. You had Laramidia to the west and Appalachia to the east. And uh, so this is basically on the, if we're looking at it from a Laramidian perspective, this would be the east coast of Laramidia. And uh, yeah, so these would probably be like kind of low-lying areas, floodplain, you know, swamps, rivers, kind of leading out to the sea. All kinds of different dinosaurs would have lived in this environment and died in this environment and left their bones for us to find. So, yeah, yeah. Somebody had a question, what is one thing that I always make sure I don't forget when I'm going out to the field? I mean, well, a hat is uh, it's pretty essential, especially when you forget to put sunscreen on like I did this morning um, in a busy morning. But, uh, yeah, yeah, a hat is pretty essential. But there's so many different things that you need, you know, good sturdy shoes, you know, I've got uh, eight inch hunting boots like this. These are kind of my go-to. Um, yeah, need some you know, decent water, <laughs> you need food in the field, you need digging tools. Uh, yeah, there are other things that, that you forget, like sunscreen, which are really important also. I forgot that today. Hopefully I'm not paying for that tonight. Um, but yeah, yeah. And it's not actually that hot here, Lupus Draconis. It's, this is the warmest it's been so far, and I'm guessing it's probably in the low 70s. Somebody can do the, uh, the weather command right now for Green River, Wyoming, but I'm guessing it's probably like 72 right now. It's actually really, really nice, especially after how chilly it's been recently. So yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, and it is lovely, Chales above. It is indeed. Yeah. 
Uh, partly cloudy, 66 degrees Fahrenheit. I'd buy that, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, good stuff. Uh, Kira, Rob Sui, Izzy Black. How are you all doing, XF Kirsten? Jiga FPS. Welcome, welcome. And yeah, I've not seen any rattlesnakes or any snakes of any kind so far, Jiga FPS. Um, yeah, Ethan said he doesn't, he hasn't seen a rattler in this area yet. I'm sure they're out here, but I don't know. I've never really had any trouble with rattlesnakes out in the field. I've seen them before. I woke up with one on my chest once on a really cold morning. Came, came into my tent after like a kangaroo rat chewed a hole in the tent. I think it was probably looking for kangaroo rats and then found a source of warmth instead. But, uh, I don't know. I really like snakes. They don't, they don't really bother me. As long as they, uh, as long as they don't bite. But yeah. Um, and Izzy says, Danny, what kind of fossil are you hoping to find besides the Ceratopsian? I mean, that's the cool thing about this formation is that anything that we find is going to be important and potentially new. Just about any kind of dinosaur that we find is going to be a new species just by virtue of this being unexplored territory. Like, this is from a time and a place that we don't have any dinosaurs named from yet. So there's a decent chance that that Ceratopsian is going to be a new species, maybe even a new genus. Um, but we won't know that until we actually get it back to the laboratory and prep it and study it. So, like we talked about before, <laughs> paleontology takes time. <laughs> um, we don't get instant results. Uh, yeah, because you got to dig something up in the field, you got to bring it back to the lab, you've got to clean it, uh, you know, prep it, you've got to curate it. Uh, you got to study it, photograph it, write it up, send it through review, and then hopefully get it published. That whole process can take years. The whole process can take decades. Um, so, yeah, this doesn't look like it's going to take decades, hopefully. Uh, it's really cool that you got to see that in the ground because it's going to be covered up uh, very shortly in, like, the next couple hours. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, and did the... Uh we having some issues with the Wi-Fi right now. Just be patient. I'm sure it's going to come back. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're getting sound? Good, Lenina. Okay. Um, that's the thing is that, you know, this is satellite internet. We are miles from nowhere currently. This is an off-the-grid stream, so we're very lucky that this is even possible. So, uh... Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, still watchable. Good. I'm glad. And holy cow, we've got 217 people watching. It's pretty excellent. Yeah, yeah. Um, very, very nice. Yeah, let me know if you guys have got any more questions. I am all ears right now. I am attuned to chat. Yeah. Uh, still pretty impressive for being in the middle of nowhere. I would think so, awkward cyborg. Uh, Mr. Vet says, watch out for bandits. No, I mean, no kidding. In this area, Wyoming can be pretty rough and tumble like that. So you know, let's hope we get back to camp and it's not been ransacked. Uh, you never know. I shouldn't say these things out loud. But. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Casually Average says, how is the satellite internet working for you on this trip? I mean, judge for yourself, you know? We've got it going right there. And, uh, yeah. If anything, the, it's been frustrating and that it's been too cloudy to really use the solar panels very much. So I've got another big battery pack back in camp, the one that, uh, all of you helped me buy with that fundraiser. And, uh, yeah, it's at like 8%. <laughs> I tried charging it up this morning, and we just kept getting clouds drifting in, and, um, so yeah, yeah, that might turn out to be a limiting factor in how many streams we're able to do, uh, over the next few days. It's just been so cloudy that I haven't been able to get a lot of solar. Um, but yeah, yeah, and Izzy, this is a new dig area for me, yeah, yeah. Ethan and, and some of his other, uh, some of his volunteers have been here for, two years prior. Um, but this particular site that Nick found just the other day is new. Um, yeah. 
uh, maybe a note on the nomenclature here. When, when I say site, what I mean is like an individual spot where you have something to collect, you know? You've got a dinosaur coming out there, or it's a microsite, or it's, you know, there's a turtle going into the hill right here. That kind of thing. I call it a site. Um, and then you've got your field area, uh, like this. So this field area, Ethan and his crew have been working for, this is their third year here. And, uh... My first time here. Next first time here, too. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. And almonds. Yeah, I actually don't know why this is called the almond formation. That story might be lost to time. Oh. <laughs> but it is almond, just like, uh, just like the nut. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, Clever, for reposting that question. Any worry that since the media media is so soft, the fossils will be more fragile? Oh, the matrix. We call that matrix, um, the surrounding sediment. Um, so far, the bone has been nice and hard, and the matrix has been really soft, which is wonderful. Uh, that's exactly what you want, and very rarely do we get that to this extent. So that's, uh, that's pretty excellent. To have hard bone and soft matrix it makes our lives a lot easier. Uh, it definitely makes me happy. So yeah, yeah. Um, can you hear more clearly out there with no noise? Um, I don't know. The air here is fairly dry, so maybe sound doesn't travel as far. It's been tricky hearing crew members shouting from far away over the past couple days because it's just been so windy. Um... And we constantly get these little storm clouds drifting in. And we get rain from that. And yeah. But it's really nice. It's pretty nice and quiet right now. It's quiet enough that the little fan on the the solar power station is... Uh, it sounds obnoxiously loud. Because everything else around here is just so quiet. It's pretty peaceful. Yeah. Um... So yeah, yeah. Anyway. And we are out in the field today, Aria Wife. <laughs> welcome, welcome. It's great to have you here. Shoot, let me uh stand up and walk around a little bit before my leg falls asleep. Ah, too late. <sighs> Got some flies buzzing on me too. Uh but yeah, if you're just tuning in, welcome to Paleontologizing. You picked an excellent day to be here. My name is Danny Anduza. I'm a dinosaur paleontologist. I work on dinosaurs. I dig them up, I study them, I publish on them, and yeah, we're digging up some dinosaurs this week out here in western Wyoming. So I'm so glad you could uh, you could be here to witness that. Yeah. Um, right now I'm waiting on Ethan, who's kind of our crew leader. He's the one who... Uh, um, yeah, like, working out in the almond, this is kind of his brainchild. And, uh, yeah, yeah, this is his project. And, uh, we're lucky to be out here with him. But he had to run into town to get some supplies, including some plaster of Paris, so that we can jacket the top of this ceratopsian up there. Uh, ceratopsian frill portion. So, yeah, kind of waiting on that. I'm hoping he gets here soon, because it'd be wonderful to actually show you how that process works. <laughs> I'm getting a very persistent big black fly keeps trying to land on me and might have designs on biting me, but yeah. Let's hope it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, is it hot out there? It's not. It's actually really, really comfortable. It's, temperatures are like in the high 60s, maybe low 70s. Um, yeah, like kind of ideal weather. I just wish there weren't quite as many clouds because then I could bring the solar panels up and get some more juice for the solar generator. I might have to do that at some point. But, uh, yeah. And Diatom's attack says, if your blood wasn't so tasty, you wouldn't have that problem. I mean, yeah, maybe I should take after Diatom's and just not have blood at all, huh? <laughs> Good to see you, Diatom's attack. Yeah. Um... But yeah, yeah. 
And Nader Fiend says, you probably spoke about this, but did you enjoy season two as much as season one of Prehistoric Planet? I don't know. I think season one was so new and novel that I don't know if anything could ever top it. Um, but season two is also very good. I still haven't seen the, the last of this, the, the last part of the last episode. Um, yeah, so I might even watch that in camp one of these nights. I have it on my computer. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's just wonderful to see such attention paid to authenticity uh, in a Mesozoic, you know, in Mesozoic environments like that, uh, especially with the dinosaurs. You know I'm a dinosaur guy. Yeah, it's pretty special. So if anybody's not yet seen Prehistoric Planet, I heartily recommend it. Fly. Um, yeah. And uh, find it, fix it. Welcome to Paleontologizing. They say this is cool. I didn't expect to see this on Twitch. Well, I'm glad you're here. Holy cow. You and uh, 222 other people right now. Excellent. Yeah. Um, ah, do you see this fly? Ah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. And Golgonek, thank you for the gift sub to Die Thomas Attack. I appreciate that, Golgonek. It's because of the support of this community that, you know, I'm able to stream on Twitch at all. Thank you for that. The reason I'm able to do this full time. But also the reason that we're out here in the first place, you know, it's like $7,000 worth of funding that you guys came up with for the fundraiser. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> things would have been very, very different if that had not come through. I'll say that. Um, we're, uh, we're having a great season so far, and I'm deeply grateful to everybody who contributed. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, that fly's volunteering for jacketing duty. It might become a part of the jacket at this point, Jody Fish. Fly will not leave me alone. I am generally pretty tolerant of critters, but that one's really getting on my nerves. But yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> there you go, Diet Thomas. Exactly, yeah. And somebody wanted to know, let me scroll down. Sothi Saint going well. How you doing, Sothi? How old is that hill behind Danny? What sediments are in it? We can maybe go over the uh, these strata really briefly here. Yeah, so right now we're in the almond formation up here. So these are these kind of yellowish rocks. These continue along down here. And if we look across the ridge over there, I'm not sure if you can see that very well, but we've got the, uh, oh shoot, it's not the Eagle Sandstone, that's the one up in Montana and Billings. Um, shoot. Nick, do you remember what the sandstone that overlies this is called? What formation that was? Yeah, it's not got a very memorable name. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Um... Anyway, yeah, so we've actually got a, you know, set of marine strata on top of this from when the seaway invaded again before the very end of the Cretaceous. So this area was land, where we're standing right now, and then after that, maybe a few tens of thousands of years later, maybe hundreds of thousands of years later, it's hard to say because we don't have good dates for this area, uh, the western interior seaway expanded again, again. it uh, kind of came up over the land, and... Uh, yeah, and we get the strata above the almond. Oh, and that white truck down there is our rental, and Ethan's driving it, so this is excellent. Chances are good we are going to get to stream some plaster jacketing. So yeah, yeah. Excellente. Let me scroll down to the bottom of chat. Um, thank you, Raceland. I appreciate that five months of support. Thank you, thank you very much. Hey, Ethan! <laughs> I might actually have to, uh, to wrap this up so that we can go carry some stuff up there. But, uh, yeah. Actually... You know what? Rather than ending the stream, I'm just going to set the camera up and uh, everyone can practice some patience <laughs> as I go down there to get some supplies because I do not want to 
slack on this. So we're gonna put the camera right here, like that, and I'm gonna carry some supplies back up. So just uh, wait for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I will be right back, everybody. Stay tuned.
Well, thanks for waiting, everybody. Ah. I am going to heed all those hydrates that were, uh, were deemed earlier. But let me show you what I brought up here. Let me make sure we're still live, too. Um, let's see. Uh huh. Nobody stole us. There you go, Rizzi Degu. Thanks for being here. Thanks for sticking around. Yeah. Well, what kind of goodies does Santa have in his bag? More bags. We've got some burlap right here. This is one of the key components of any good fossil jacket. Yeah. Uh, ooh. Look at that. Bird friendly. Very nice. Yeah, so we got burlap. And more burlap. And plaster of Paris. And Pepe uh, Tawel. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go jacket that fossil in just a couple minutes. But let me get some water first. Yeah, this is not a lightweight bag. At least not to lug up a hill. You know, at least a quarter mile. Uh, yeah, let me get some water. I'll be right back. Sorry, I don't have the measuring cup here. Wouldn't really stand up to this kind of environment. It's more of an office thing. Ah. All right, let me strap the phone back onto my arm. All covered in dust. Out here, everything gets covered in dust and grit and sand. But uh, yeah, yeah. Does that even know that's Nick coming back up with more supplies? Yeah, he's got some water for the plaster and maybe for drinking. And uh, plaster bucket to mix the plaster in. And uh, yeah. That was fast, Nick. And we cannot drive the truck up here. No. Find it, fix it. That would be against, uh, against the rules here. We're on public land. Federal land. Bureau of Land Management land. And you got to stick to the roads when you're on BLM land. If we're on private, then we could get the uh, landowner's permission to just drive anywhere, but even then, like, I don't know. As scientists, we're often like, <laughs> we don't want to tear things up. We don't want to ruin any critters' homes or anything like that, so unless we absolutely have to drive off the road, even on private land, like, we generally won't do that. Um, <coughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh. And what about a wagon, says Oliver. I mean, the, if I could walk you down there and show you, this is not nearly as flat <coughs> as it looks. There's a pretty steep drop off right there. It's all, kind of big, all kinds of big rocks and stuff in the way. I have a little folding uh, four-wheeled wagon that I brought with me and I wouldn't use it here. It'd be more of a pain than just carrying things, honestly. 
the terrain is far too rough. <coughs> far too rough for that. <clears throat> but yeah, yeah. Uh, hover platform. I wish they will. <laughs> yeah, it seems legit to respect the biome exactly. Uh, hamburger. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. SPF reapply. I didn't actually bring any sunscreen with me today. But, uh, maybe I'll see if anybody else on the crew has any. <sighs> yeah, and make a way. Self-propelled wheelbarrows, mainly in Mexico. You talking about, uh, some kind of equid there? Un burro, perhaps? Yeah, we don't have any, uh, donkeys or mules. Or burros, or, or horses, with us. That's what volunteers are for, you know? That's what I'm here for. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. And how long does it take to use the plaster of Paris? You're gonna see, Izzy, you will see. We are gonna show you that in just a few minutes, as long as that's okay with the crew. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. How was town, Ethan? Still there. Good. Still there. Got some goodies. <laughs> nice. Plaster. Hand sanitizer. Beautiful. Hand sanitizer. Got important. Wyoming hat. Got a Wyoming hat. Nice. I want to get a Wyoming shirt at some point. Yeah. Not a not a Wyoming Cowboys football team shirt, but like just yeah. Wyoming. I want to find that. Everybody, here's Letters. here's Ethan again. Hey hey. Yeah. Back from town. Out of breath. Yeah. Ready to go. Nice. <clears throat> Let's get ready to jacket this thing. Yeah, it looks much closer than it is. Uh. All right. Nice. Now we find a good place to put this. Oh, is that one? Uh, that was a fragment over there. Like, somebody must have picked it up earlier. Or something. Got it. And just kind of overlooked it. Yeah. That should do it. Wow. It is. And on the drive back, I was like, is this really what we think it is? <laughs> glad, glad to see it again. Yeah. I realized that it is definitely what I think it is. What's up, Glenn? How's it going? Oh, not too bad. Any luck up there? Yeah, some, some luck. Just needed a little change of scenery. Sure. Yeah. Get some new bits. Yeah. Get some for a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's see how this works. Yeah, first. Dude, Ooh. Have you looked at my face. It's pretty red? Yeah, yeah. I already put it on. Oh, nice. After I looked at my face. Right on. My phone. We're live, by the way. Yeah. People are saying hi to you, Quinn. Hey. You're, you're a fan favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Do I look red? I don't know if you can tell. Not from this angle, no. Yeah, probably not. But... <laughs> My arms are definitely getting red. I've got some aloe back in camp if oh, you need thank any. God. Yeah. Oh, how's it coming <laughs> over here? How was the trip in town? Good. Just got back. It's about 125 pounds of plaster. So, <laughs> so it should be enough, hopefully, for this spot and Gold Ridge. Cool. Did you just carry that all the way up? No? We, we shared it. It was between three hands. Nice. Many hands make. What is it? Idle work? Yeah. Many hands make the devil's workshop, I think. Yeah. Many hands are the devil's tools. <laughs> Many hands are the devil's PlayStation. <laughs> it's probably kind of accurate. You know, anything truly evil, you need to recruit other people. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to do. It's degree of leadership. <laughs> hard to do anything efficiently yeah, evil that's alone. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here, let's take a, another close-up because we've got significantly more people here now, like double what we had earlier. 254 people watching right now. It's pretty good numbers. Welcome everybody. We're just squirting some milk on our dinosaur here. <laughs> it's still thirsty after all these years. Yeah, it needs that calcium, you know? So for those who are just joining, what this is is part of the skull of a horned dinosaur, like a relative of Triceratops. So it's like part of that big neck shield, the big frill, we call it, the big shield that covers the back of the neck. And so we think this is part of that big shield or frill. And the frills of horned dinosaurs 
are some of the most important parts of them that tell you what kind of species they are because they vary so much between species and they all have different patterns of scales and spikes and hooks and horns. And so hopefully this specimen will let us figure out exactly what kind of horn dinosaur we have here in the almond formation. Yeah. It's looking promising. We're squirting some glue on the rock itself. Yeah. So this is just Elmer's glue. Yeah, like you see the right there. Yeah, diluted in water. And you said you picked this up from the Moroccans? Yeah, they use this over in, uh, when they're digging up Mosasaurs. It's just kind of cheap uh, penetrant and consolidant. Uh, you can dilute dilute white glue with water. And the one thing is it's not very reversible, so it's hard to get off the bones, but if you just want to glue the rock together, it's probably a good, a good choice. Yeah. You know, it's just a... You know, it also works. It works pretty well if you've got like really damp rock as well, where where you know paraloid might not penetrate mm -hmm. quite as well. But we're just going to try and like kind of glue some of the edges up, so that it's less likely to break apart when we flip the jacket. And uh, yeah, we've cool. I've never actually done this in the field before. Me neither. Yeah. No, it's I, I mean it's just kind of a, a bit of well, I don't want to say an experiment because you don't want to experiment with this, but I think it. <laughs> I, I've seen this work quite effectively, uh -huh. and so I think it'll be. Just kind of a way to kind of help give a little bit more strength to our, our block. Nice. And uh, kind of help hold it all together. So most of the gray gray stuff is the rock. And then this reddish orangey patch from here all the way around. That's the bone. So it's we've made a little perimeter around it of rock so that we can leave it encased in some of the rock when we pull it out, just to keep it cradled and safe until we can get back to the controlled conditions of the lab yeah. and, and clean it's it so up. so beautiful. <laughs> we were so <laughs> lucky with you. this. Holy cow. Found this on our first day of work, yeah, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, auspicious sign. There was a rainbow coming out of the truck on the first day, so that's, yeah. a, that's also a good yeah. omen. I believe it was going into my Prius, actually, at least from that's where true. I was standing. <laughs> A, a neat technique. Yeah. yeah I, think, you know, I, I think it could be pretty effective. I mean, might ideally just a little more glue, but cost effective too. This stuff yeah. is not expensive. A couple no, bucks. It's just, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or yeah. Else? How many people yeah, watching right now when they were uh, of school age, you know, putting this under their hands and then peeling it off? Little did you realize this was an important, you know, scientific tool that you were that you were using back then. And possibly eating. I mean, the stuff is non-toxic. So, yeah. On the right, you're facing this side. Where I was, where you saw the Okay. Cool. How are how are they doing morale-wise? You getting tired up there? Nice. Yeah, I was working at a less exciting site this morning with uh, with Adam and Quinn. This site's much more exciting here. Yeah. Nice. Whoa, really? Yeah. Like this thick and like this? Yeah, it's probably like that thick and like... Whoa, dude. Yeah, yeah. We gotta check that out. Oh, and T. Walrus. It's just, oh man, I miss field work a lot. Did a lot in East Oregon and Montana. I did a lot of field work in Montana, too. Yeah, we are in western Wyoming right now. Kind of near the town of Green River. So, uh... Yeah. Beautiful country out here. And we've had beautiful weather today. You guys didn't encounter any other bone getting around the trench up there? Uh-uh. That's a good sign. There are a couple of rocks that kind of gave me a scare. A rock you know, scare? Just because uh, they sounded like you described the bone sounding when you hit it with a metal implement, but... Where's the one that I... Rocks. Where's the bone that I found? Where'd that go? Here oh, it is. Right yeah, here. It's, it's... I glued that with uh, oh, some of the other glue. That, the cyanoacrylate? Not the cyanoacrylate. Okay, the, uh, It was already super glued when I left. So. Oh, okay. Not, not, not super glued, but well glued. I mean. Okay. Yeah. I hit it with a bunch of food fart. Right on. Trying to consolidate it. Permanent. Yeah, I didn't. I, you know, I kind of dug behind it and didn't find anything. But maybe going underneath it, we'll probably have to include it. Yeah, maybe. Uh, okay, there might be some bone there. So I'm to try to avoid that. And then after that, I say we, once we're elmered up, I say we get the surface as free of dust in it, anything as possible, before we start loading strips of burlap onto it. Smart. Um, and then we'll have to figure out. Exactly where these bones go. You need to fit those on before we jacket it? I think so. I mean, I mean they go in right there. They, they broke and it was a discovery mark, basically. Oh, gotcha. Okay. But, uh... I might be able to just, like... 
I think uh, it's possible to like do our best to you put my paper towel it in. Yeah, that's Just possible. Uh, it might, I think that's the, it'll create kind of a void the in the jacket. Of, the odds of us figuring out exactly where it goes in the lab are less than half of what it is here, probably. Mm. Yeah, when we're out here in the field, you always got to be thinking about, you know, how are the preparators in the laboratory going to deal with this, trying to make things easier for them. You showed this off yet? Uh, I don't know if we looked at that chunk in particular. This yeah. is just kind of pour. This is just we barely even dug any. Of this is just kind of just pouring out of the hill. But so this is in situ right here, pretty much. These are chunks of other parts of this ceratopsian neck shield or frill. Very cool. Let's take a look at that texture. Yeah. So you see, these are all these beds are, these grooves are neurovascular canals for blood vessels and that sort of thing, and the neck shields of horned dinosaurs are riddled with these. So that's another telltale sign of that we have a ceratopsian, and this just fits perfectly into place in the ground without this other chunk there. Hmm. Or it's probably the other way around, actually. Like this. Yeah, there we go. Nice. So it's going deeper into the into the ground. Exciting. So we have more of this dinosaur to get out. Yeah. The raven says, oh man, they look so much like rock to me. It's all about the texture, you know? Yeah. And you know, they're, they're encased in rock and covered in rock and the same colors as rock and hard exactly. like rock. <laughs> So they're almost more rock than bone at this point, but <laughs> right. fortunately they that's, preserve. That's fossilization, you know? Yeah. This is a good chunk. We showed this up? Yeah, yeah, we were taking a look at that earlier. Next gotcha. Show. So here you can see. Beautiful groups this. there. Yeah. Groovy, groovy. And it's nice and thick. This backside is broken, but this is the characteristic telltale sign of horned yeah. dinosaur skull piece. Very distinctive texture. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, we have pipettes, don't we? We do. It's just taking a long time. I'm trying yeah. to get this more efficient. Way Shoot, to... I should have brought my uh, my mustard bottle up. Mm -hmm. That would have been excellent for this. With that variable aperture cap. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, and this basically sets immediately, right? Because it's all much blue. Just like... oh, there you go. I think this. I think we should be good if we just get enough layers in here. Yeah. I don't think we strictly speaking need the almost a stereo. But it's just a nice precaution. Yeah, Insurance policy. Why not? We also don't know what's bone over here exactly. Yeah, so. I'm trying to look at that. Nice. Yeah, normally we might not be as concerned about um, keeping the rock together, but this is a really important specimen. So this is it's a really good thing that we're trying this yeah, method here. Incredibly friable rock. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's very, very. Uh, it's really easy to dig through, but like easy yeah. to break. in that jacket, I figure it could just kind of turn to dust. Come apart. How do you think we're going to get this down? You said we had a stretcher coming. On the way. I hope it's here in time. Okay. You know, I think this shouldn't. The rock is pretty light, and I think we can whittle it. Once we flip it, we can probably whittle it down quite a ways. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think between two or three guys taking turns, we could easily get this down. Yeah, I think so. And the road is close enough, and it's all downhill. Yeah. So. There we go. Down there. There's a truck driving by. We do get some traffic on these. These dirt roads out here. I'm not sure how long it will take to dry as all, but it's, it's so dry out here it shouldn't take too long. And does the glue seep into the rock or coat it? It seeps in. Yeah, this is penetrative. Um, yeah. Inching forward. Lord. You said you heard him talking? Yeah, I heard him laughing. They probably think we're fools. <laughs> Look at those idiots, this is all Green River formation. <laughs> They're too high in section. <laughs> There's no way that parental's diagnosed. <laughs> <laughs> Those idiots are going to name a ceratopsian from one bone? <laughs> uh, it's just fish up there? How's he doing? I guess so. Good, fair enough? Cool. Nice. I'll probably head back up there. I just wanted to see how you guys are doing. Yeah, nice. um, if you 
if you guys are feeling pretty beat, you're welcome to uh, head back to back to the camp if you want to just cover the bone and stuff with the, with the tarp. Okay. Still uh, got some energy. It is much, about. But... What is it? It's four. No, five o'clock. It's, it's five o'clock. So yeah. you guys are welcome to prospect or whatever. Yeah. Or you can drive back if you need. It's up to you. I wouldn't. Uh, wouldn't look. Down, fr wouldn't frown on it. Yeah, you guys worked hard today. It's also it's hot not, up the most, there. not the most forgiving sight. Yeah, you're just so exposed in the sun and the wind. Yeah. At least you had good tunes. Yeah, we got good tunes going. <laughs> Never underestimate tunes. I introduced these guys to the Johnny Cash dinosaur song today, which they'd never heard before, and that was uh... that was a pleasure to hear. <laughs> That's Added maybe we'll, to we'll call it there. With yeah. this. You want to cap it tomorrow? Or I think we could I cap think, it today. I think we can cap it. I think we should cap it today, but I mean, we'll, yeah. we'll call it. We'll call the um, the Elmers for now. Okay. Should be enough, I think. Okay. I'm gonna try to get it as clean as possible. Nice. And after that, we'll uh, put on some separator. Uh, do you have my brush, Ethan? Yeah, it should be in my backpack. Okay, cool. I keep um, asking you for that. Time. I'm sorry I'm pestering you. No, you're good. It's, yeah, it's, I'll, I'll do that now. It's a good brush, though. I, I like that brush. Here, dude. Yeah, we have enough for... Are there a few, were there a few up there? You guys said you didn't have any, but I thought we'd left a few. Does it have your name on it? Or yeah. Just a black brush. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's got my name on it. <laughs> Everybody wants to use the brush, so, you know, I just... I'm going to put my name on it. <laughs> help me with my backpack? Yeah, there you go. Nick, what's up? Help me with this? Sure. Yeah, so again, here's our right, topsy and frill sorry. bit. Just grab this, grab the backpack. Doesn't look like much now, but it's going to be very important. Great, there's your bag. I mean, it looks like a lot to us, but I'm sure on camera it doesn't look like much. Thank you, Ethan. Perfect. Yeah. Nice. to leave this overnight to be honest. We'll cover it up. I know, but yeah. that's the thing is people just driving by know exactly where we are and there's a tarp here to see it. It's pretty hard to see from the road. Yeah. I mean they clearly saw us, right? Yeah but we're standing up and I don't know we'll have to We can also <laughs> set up some, some decoy spots if you want. Make a tarp over a rock or something. It's a really drunk bit of a hike to get up to mischief. <laughs> We used to do that in the Hell Creek sometimes, just like if we were right near a road. Uh, even make like a decoy jacket if we have extra plaster, just plaster a rock somewhere. Let's let's call it there, Nick, just because okay. the longer, we, the more we do, the more we have to wait for it to dry, and we don't know okay. how long it takes. So. Well, I think we could probably just... What do we need to do in terms of getting a separator layer down? Just clean this off a little bit, or...? Yeah, so I'm going to get on your side and okay. get all the dust off and get something else good on the other side. And... Strange Hamburger says, what if it's a new type of Ceratopsian? I mean, it's pretty likely. The odds are high. The odds are high. Yeah. What if? <laughs> Exciting stuff. Yeah. Miss Yvette says, cover it before the bandits come. That's uh, Yeah. That's good advice. <laughs> that's what we're afraid of. Yeah. The Tuscan Raiders. <laughs> I believe the, the proper term is sand people. Yeah, I prefer, I prefer Tuscan Raiders. I think that's the new term. <laughs> no, that's I think you're they, actually think that's right. What they, that's what well, chat, what, what do you have to say? Well, look, this is going to start a 20-minute discussion in chat now. Tatooine. Yeah. Anyone from Tatooine here? <laughs> <laughs> we look like we're on Tatooine. Yeah. Oh, wow. There's Anybody from under the twin suns? Is there any butte bar around? <laughs> glue? <laughs> I haven't seen any. He's got glue. We got to have a whole bag of it. Oh. There it is, yeah. There's one. One boy. Well, this looks pretty sad to me. I don't, I don't see any. Is that the boot for the, uh, the sending an acrylic though? Oh shoot. Yeah. Well, then where's the? It should be right over here. That was bone. This could be deep. Oh, it's not really. So we had two glue bottles up here. So they must be somewhere. Somebody took one of them over to the 
Is somebody's bag sitting on top of that, maybe? No. Hmm. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, y'all. Yeah, they were floating around somewhere. I put my brush back over here before I forget it. This looks pretty. A little cloudy, but I think it's close. This is, I think it's all now useful. All right, and let me put shoulder strap on. There we go. Beautiful, yeah. So you use the youth bar up there, not the sign on there. Just the stuff we do next time. Yeah, it was as well as the little chunk. Yeah. It's reversible, so even though it's chunky, we can later on, if we have to, we can fix it up yeah. or remove it rather. So here you can see some of the typical tools that we use at a site like this. Um, got some awls and screwdrivers, classic oyster knife, great for digging through mudstones and sandstones too. We do get oysters in the island formation. Yeah, I found some yesterday, um, if those were oysters. But uh, they were loose. I didn't have to use the oyster knife on those. <laughs> Maybe we'll find an excuse for it at some point. Yeah. To use its namesake. <laughs> of course, we got a tarp there to cover the site. Also, I think uh, I'm going to cover the entire surface of the nodule in this thin glue. I mean, this is a uh, butte bar, so. Because um, there's, there's spots that actually don't quite look like bone, but then you get close and you realize they are, and they're pretty friable, like over here. Um, so, how thirsty is that? Is it just depends? It right depends up? where you go. So this piece came off this piece of ironstone, and then I realized, oh, that's actually a chunk of bone on the bottom of it. There's a piece over here where it looks like a maybe some bone flaked off the ironstone. Where's that? Like right there. It's, it's kind of covered up now. Precious. This might be the fenestra margin here, Nick. Yeah. See this? It's so thin there. And it's kind of curling. Yeah. So here it looks like there's, that's kind of like it's kind of popped off, I suppose. But. Yeah, I think that's actually, that looks like cortical surface to me. So I think the ironstone is gone, but I think, I think, um, I think this is the bone surface. Yeah. It doesn't look holy enough to me. Okay. But uh, I should still glue it up. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, yeah, here's the iron, and I think this is the bone immediately underneath the ironstone. Beautiful preservation. Wow, look at this. Once you get it to soak up some glue, it really pops out. Nice. Very nice. Beautiful bone texture. There's some bubbles on it right now, but uh -huh. lovely, man. This is what it's all about. <laughs> Couldn't ask for... We've been looking for something like this for sorry, our third year, looking for something like this good. Yeah. And it looks like a pile of rubble, and that's what it is, but that's what we came for. <laughs> we thrive on carnage. Yeah, this thing's going to be beautiful once it gets prepped. I know. Yeah. The other side especially is probably going to look really nice. Yeah. Well, that's, that's another key piece of the whole uh, whole puzzle is, you know, the preparator is the one who takes this thing looks like a rock and <laughs> turns it into something beautiful you can put on display in your museum and publish papers on and so on and so forth. So, you know, <laughs> the, the texture, the surface texture on this yeah. looks like it looks like epiparietal texture. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's just, it just is beautiful yeah. D-shaped epiparietal. I think we're, we're past the point of having to doubt ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're there. Yeah, so everybody following along at home, the epis are the little kind of triangular bones, almost like little spiky guys around the margin of the frill on horned dinosaurs, like triceratops. And Yeah. You guys are privy to some pretty cool stuff here. Absolutely. Yeah. This is a, a real first on Twitch, so... Uh, the funny thing is, like, some of our colleagues, we probably don't tell this stuff to. <laughs> What'd you find out there? Oh, I like some bone. Uh -huh. Triceratopsians? Uh, who knows? We'd have to get back to the lab and see. <laughs> I'm just showing it to the world. Yeah, yeah. Look. Uh -huh. Look, world. Well, we get yeah, special privileges to the paleontologizing fans. Yes. Thank you, everybody. For, uh, yeah, yeah. some of our colleagues would be very, very jealous that you're getting to see this. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Did you, so you guys find anything out there? Uh, maybe we'll see, you know, a couple of years, <laughs> ask us, see around, maybe. Uh, wow. Well, that's just incredible. This is just... Yeah, just incredible. And this is going to clean up real nice. We've got more of it going in too. Like yeah. this isn't all. That's 
More pieces there. <laughs> you got some job security there with the streaming. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Here and stream a bunch more. <laughs> stream each bone coming out. <laughs> yeah. This is as good as it gets, baby. Do we have anybody new here in the chat? Anybody lurking right now? They want to say hello. Lurkers. Uh, yeah, lurkers. Show yourselves if you feel like it. Um, yeah, welcome to Paleontologizing. So glad you're here today. If this is your first time, holy cow, did you pick an awesome first stream to join. The rest of the show may not be. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to top this. We might have peaked just now. Yeah. <laughs> Next few weeks, it's like, is that a bone? No, it's a rock. What about that? <laughs> that's a rock, too. Here's a bone. No, that's, that's definitely a rock. Yeah. It might be all downhill from here. Hopefully not. <laughs> oh, Izzy wants to know how long did it take to find this? Nick found this on the first day. <laughs> So we I mean, spent the whole morning setting up camp, so we only had like a bit of time in the afternoon, and then mm -hmm. bam, there it was. Uh, but what yeah, <clears throat> one day and twenty years of field work to find this thing. So there's <laughs> yeah, it's like one day, yeah. And there's all the years I never found anything like this, leading up to this. Uh, Acorn wants to know: Could that whole hill be full of dinosaur bones? I mean. This yes. Yes, and no. Potentially, you know, if, yeah. we, if we dove into this at this we angle, follow this horizon right here. Yeah. This layer. This is where we're going to find the stuff. Um, <coughs> yeah. Not like every few power. feet, but as we're yeah. walking over these hills, there's dinosaurs underneath us, and we don't know they're there. And we have exactly. Yeah. So the, you're, you're basically dependent on erosion mm -hmm. to kind of expose. I mean, with, a, with a handful of exceptions where fossils are dense enough, you can just like tunnel back into the hills. Almost everywhere. They occur like every few hundred meters or something, so you can't really just dig in and hope to find something. You have to walk out huge, you know, square miles of exposure until you find a few scraps of bone coming out, and then you follow it back in. Yep. So they're very low density, so you basically need you need erosion to basically expose the rock for you, so you can come in and do your work. Yep. <clears throat> see Nick uh, removing some of those. It's a plant right there. I, my arm got all scratched up by this earlier when I was working there. I don't know if you can still see it, but uh, yeah, it's just, the yeah. thing is prickly. <coughs> I'm gonna have to get around here and might as well get out of the way. And yeah, I think we're like a little bit less painful as we plaster this. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. She's lovely. <laughs> Isn't she beautiful? Really, really nice. I want to tell her that I love her a lot, but I gotta get a belly full of wine. <laughs> so top seems a pretty nice girl, someday I'm gonna make her mine. And how many people, when they woke up this morning, watching right now, realized that they were gonna witness a dinosaur being dug up? And maybe discovered too. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I mean, you can go to the Hell Creek, and there's a lot more dinosaur out there, and you can find a lot more things mm -hmm. in the dinosaur park, and you, but it's mostly stuff we've seen before. So you go to the Hell Creek, there'll be Triceratops, 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 more Triceratops, T-Rex, Triceratops, Admonosaurus, Triceratops. Mm -hmm. Spam, spam, spam eggs and spam. Uh, <laughs> you know, so it's the same thing. I mean, yeah. not that Triceratops isn't awesome, uh, but we're seeing potentially the first piece of a new species that mm -hmm. we've never been, you know, never been seen before. Uh, or maybe only scra only that partial skull of it before. So that, mm -hmm. that's kind of the exciting thing about being here compared to somewhere like the Hell Creek where there's lots more dinosaurs, but there's it's harder to find something new because it's been worked so intensively for the past century. Yep. Uh, and, you know, yeah, so you see the little, these places, this is kind of virgin territory. A little old almond formation that nobody's ever heard of. But it's because of that obscurity that, like, yeah. it's so understudied. Anything that we find is uh, it's a good chance of being new. Yeah. You know, there's no there's no dinosaurs in the almond formation, prehistoric planet, or Jurassic Park. Or like <laughs> exactly. You know, yeah. All the Hell Creek stuff. <laughs> but that, that's why it's cool. It's like the protagonist know. is a gripasaurus. <laughs> <laughs> there should be a gripasaurus out here somewhere. I bet. I mean, that's where your hadrosaur is. <laughs> Oh yeah. If you wanna sure. Switch. Speeds. Yeah. Thanks, Quinn. There we go. Very nice. Got my shadow right here. <laughs> and, and that land. 
landscape. I wouldn't say this is the prettiest place I've ever worked, but, uh, well, Quinn certainly helps, you know? But this is, you know, nothing to complain about, for sure. Humble beauty. Yeah. Wyoming, it's, it's austere, but it's, uh, but it's nice. It's really nice around sunset and sunrise. Yeah. <laughs> What's that song? Uh, it's all all right. It's all all right. Hello, Wyoming. That's that show. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> uh, let me see if we got any more questions. Yeah. That seventy million show. <laughs> yeah, that seventy million show. Seventy MYA show. Wow, we just broke 300 viewers. Not too shabby. Yeah. Pretty awesome. So again, there's the road down there. There's truck. Somewhere over there is town. Far away. And uh, at those clouds. I was told myself I was going to learn all the different cloud types and be able to point them out, but I have not done that yet. But I don't know. We've got some cumulus. Some fluffy clouds. Fluffy clouds, thank you. Yeah. Looks like we might have some nimbus in the distance. I think nimbus are the ones that. Nimbus in the distance. Yeah, that rain. <laughs> but yeah. And T. Walrus says, I just want to know how Twitch knows about my 10 year old degree in paleontology to only now recommend paleontologizing. You know, I, Twitch is a wonderful platform, but sometimes it struggles a little bit with discover, you know, discovery. Um, it's great to have you here. Shoot, what, uh, what did you do in paleo? I want to hear about it. Welcome, T. Walrus. It's, uh, it's great to have you here. Yeah. And is the crew heading to... Oh, what's that? Oh, shoot, chat's moving too fast. Heading to town to celebrate. How do you stop poachers? We're not heading to town tonight. Ethan actually just went a little while ago to pick up some supplies. So we're good. But uh, how do we protect against poachers? We try and stay inconspicuous. And to get seen. Yeah, if a truck rolls by on the road, we freeze. Um, they can't see us if we don't move. <laughs> exactly, yeah. The vision's yeah. based on movement. We walk in... Uh, Single file to hide our numbers. Uh, They'll be back, and in greater numbers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. The, really, the, the best thing we can do to protect against poachers is just to collect these things quickly. Like, the, the shortest amount of time that these things stay in the ground, the better off we are. The less likely they are to get poached. Um, Ethan, you've actually worked at sites where things have been poached before, right? Yeah, I've seen yeah. There's a fair amount of poaching in the Cedar Mountain, uh -huh. unfortunately. Um, I've seen some poached stuff in North Dakota. Um, it's it's surprisingly common. Yeah. And most of the time it's actually not illegal. It's not uh, commercial collectors or anything like that, or even hobbyists. It's just people who have no idea what they're seeing. So they just tear things they apart. They tear things up. They're like, what's this? People were here. I wonder what's over here. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's honestly, it's often just like harmless people who are just trying to, who are just curious. Mm -hmm. And it's rarely, you know, I mean, not rarely, but it's not always the person who knows what they're doing and is being malicious. But right. Sometimes it is. I've seen sites where, like, they tear into a jacket and they just tear out all the teeth Ugh. from a dentary or something like that. I mean, and Phil Curry estimated that he had seen, like, 30 specimens of Tarbosaurus totally destroyed yeah. in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. Dozens and dozens. It's very, very as common in Mongolia. As destroyed of Tarbosaurus as there are of T-Rex in, in total. That's crazy. Yeah. 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 Yuck. Some people have no respect, you know? I'm going to go check in on Fisher. Cool. Okay. Tell him we say hi, and we miss him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I, we missed a question from Oliver. Oliver wants to know, what makes you think it's a new species? I mean, we won't really know until it gets back to the laboratory and gets cleaned. 
it's just a high likelihood that this is a new species because we don't have a horned dinosaur that's named from this formation yet. So it's a geography and a time thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, dinosaur species are very short-lived. They last about a million years or less. So basically, if you move up or down in time by a million years, you'll almost certainly get new species. <clears throat> and they also seem to have surprisingly small geographic ranges. So they don't range across the entire continent. You'll have this, like, one, one dinosaur lives down in Utah, and a closely related species will live up in Canada. And so if you move up or down in time or laterally, you tend to get new species very, very reliably. It's possible this could turn out to be something we've seen before, but it's highly likely it'll be something new. <laughs> And if it does turn out to be something that we've seen before, it's that'll important. also be really interesting. Because yeah. it'll help fill in this gap here and potentially help mm -hmm. test that endemism hypothesis. Yeah, one more data point either way. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. Really can't lose. <laughs> yeah. Key Lime wants to know, why not use those wildlife outdoor cameras to protect your finds? That's the thing, is that the cameras get stolen. <laughs> Rebecca Hunt Foster was telling us about that, how she uh, she was setting up some, some trail cameras uh, to try and catch some fossil thieves and poachers, and they just stole the cameras. Uh, those were federal property, too. So, uh, yeah, yeah. <sighs> Again, the best thing that we can do is just get things, this thing out of the ground as quickly as possible. Conspicuous. Yeah, yeah. Shapeless. Yeah. Formless. Like water. Yeah. Oh, uh, paleontologist VA wants to know, uh, is the lance on top of this? The lance does. It is above this, but not directly above. Ethan, we were trying to remember the name of the sandstone, the marine stuff that's on top of the almond. Um, there's a shale, marine shale, called the Lewis Shale. Lewis Shale. And underneath, there is a big river system called the Erickson Sandstone. Right, okay. Big white cliffs. Yeah, so... I think across from us over there, that's the Ericsson across the road, right? Mm -hmm. Below us, or uh, just above the truck, that kind of whitish sandstone exactly. up there. Exactly. And then the kind of yellowish stuff and pinkish stuff above it, that'll be the almond formation there. So you can see it's actually sloping. We're on a big old anticline here. Uh, so yeah, it's important to pay attention to these things when you're out prospecting. So. Interesting stuff. Yeah. All terrestrial vertebrates. Really? Footprints. Coal miners. Yeah. But yeah, it's completely virgin territory. We're, we're playing. Yeah, SV Harkin, I agree with you. Yeah, absolutely. SV Harkin. Is the almond smell or the matrix making you hungry? <laughs> What's making me hungry is the fact that I didn't properly eat lunch today. <laughs> Maybe I'll go ahead and do that. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but we do have the lance above this paleontologist VA. You were uh, you were correct about that. Um, we don't get Hell Creek formation in Wyoming for the most part. Is there any Hell Creek in Wyoming at all? I don't think so. I, I think, think it's all lance, I think it right? Ends the state line, basically, right? It's all lance, but yeah, there's there's you know what exactly is the difference between the Hell Creek and the lance other than the uh, state lines? It's not entirely clear. Yeah, yeah. There's actually a fair amount of variation in the lance. It doesn't all look the same. Uh huh. So I mean, huh. I mean just as. You know, I'm not a geologist, but I, I'd be tempted to call it different formations just because it has different morphologies. Looks like we're on. Hmm. Anybody, can you see or hear me right now? Let me know. Yeah. We're back. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, excellent. Let me check the uh, level on our solar battery over here. Yeah. Let's see, we are currently at 79%. Doing really well, actually. Good, good, good. It was the encoder over here that battery ran out. But uh, I have that plugged into a new battery. So we're all good. Yeah. Excellent. Again, here we are. If anybody's just tuning in, let me introduce myself real quick. My name is Danny Anduza. I'm out here digging dinosaurs, as I do. Uh, yeah, I'm a dinosaur paleontologist. I dig up dinosaurs, I study them, I publish on them, and yeah, I stream paleontology here on Twitch. This is uh, such a privilege to be able to broadcast 
from the field to you right now. Here is the Starlink setup, hooked up to a solar battery. And uh, this is our landscape out here in western Wyoming. And uh, we're digging up what could possibly be a new horned dinosaur. Uh, new species or maybe new genus, who knows? We'll, uh, we'll have a better idea of that once it gets back to the laboratory, gets cleaned up, and, uh, and gets studied. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, good stuff. Good stuff. Let's go back over here. How's it going over here? Well, yeah, there's nice. just one little stubborn piece that doesn't quite want to go back in. That actually looks kind of right. Yeah. The way mm -hmm. you just put it in. Maybe you put this click up against that. I think you, you might have it. Oh, 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 oh. You got it? Close, maybe. Um, maybe like this, and then this would go. I think that's probably it. it. No, it might be. That's probably it. So then this may have been. There may have been matrix between that. You think? Because we don't have we don't have enough bone pieces to fit between that. Maybe and it's stuff, just stuff, exploded in the ground. Yeah, I mean the stuff is shifted and stuff. So by, yeah. so by itself. So I would not be surprised if we actually that is actually the extent of it. Um, should have maybe some more there. <laughs> cool stuff. We got some questions. Let me go ahead and answer those. Back here on uh, this little perch. place right there maybe so yeah mm -hmm. yeah oh and if it is a new dinosaur then yeah there's the potential to name it um, we're not really gonna think about that right now though you know don't want to get too excited don't want to you know count those chickens before the eggs are even laid but, yeah but yeah, Izzy says the fossil looks like a jigsaw puzzle. It's actually pretty, pretty much together at this point. It's just, what we're looking at here is the frill on the back of a ceratopsian dinosaur's head. So probably a, uh, probably a parietal, which, you know, with ceratopsian dinosaurs, they've got two big bones in the middle, and then they've got other bones along the sides of the frill. I, if I'd remember to grab my, uh, my visual aids I would show you. But those are back in the car, I know. But anyway, this is basically like probably from the middle of the frill of a horned dinosaur. So exciting stuff. And that is shoot, if you only get one bone from a horned dinosaur, from a new kind of horned dinosaur, you want the parietal. That is one of the most diagnostic bones. Um, these things evolve really, really quickly. So it's not like these animals are persisting for tens of millions of years and looking the same. They're changing really rapidly. Uh, yeah, probably because these are for display. Um, but yeah, yeah. So very, very cool that we've got that bone. And uh, it's exciting stuff. Yeah. Oh, and not a high likelihood at all that we'll have DNA in this. No. Uh, so far, nobody's ever been able to get any non-avian dinosaur DNA. DNA from a, a dinosaur from the age of dinosaurs. And we've got ancient DNA from some birds, things like elephant birds, but they went extinct practically last Thursday, geologically speaking. Apiornis, the elephant bird, I think they went extinct around like... Shoot, wasn't it like 1400 AD or something like that? Like, really, really recently. Um, this animal, by contrast, is going to be about 70 million years old. Uh, so, yeah. What's the age on the almond formation again? About 73 for the dinosaur. 73. 73. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, toward, uh, toward the end of the Campanian. 7 million years before T-Rex, roughly. 7. Huh. Or Triceratops. Yeah. Very cool. So hopefully in just a few minutes, we'll get this thing jacketed and you'll be able to see that. Ready now? Uh, 
I would say five minutes. And five minutes, all right. Not, not an underestimate. I will do my best to make it <laughs> No worries. No pressure. This is great. And Lupus Draconis, I do appreciate you <laughs> trying to uh, transcribe some of the less clear dialogue and monologue here. But if anybody, yeah, I, I think people appreciate that. I don't have the closed captions on like I do when I do an office stream. So just don't have the wherewithal to do that with this kind of a setup right now, you know? Um, I've got a camera on a little selfie stick tripod thing, mobile encoder, encoder and battery pack, and you know this is this is just about as Spartan as it gets. So there's there's nowhere for closed captions to fit into this. Normally I use a browser extension for that, but there's no browser here. You know, just a mobile encoder. Yeah. I think a little piece goes in first, and the big one is, has the big gap. Yeah, that's what's gonna be. Yeah. And Delta Rain is here. How are you doing, Delta? Welcome, welcome. Great to have you. What have you been up to, Delta? Yeah. I think that was it. Somewhere here with the precise orientation. That's it. There it goes. Okay, there it clicks in. Boom, boom, nice, dude. <laughs> in fact, we might just, I'll probably butte bar that in. Okay. Um, Get or, that in first, maybe? No, the other way around, I think. Just the both pieces there. So, so right now Ethan's basically trying to fit on different pieces of this before we uh, add the layer of separator and then do the blaster jacket. Trying to make things as easy as possible on people back in the lab next month. And Lenina is definitely, we are definitely very happy here. Yeah. That's it. I see the, I see the fit, right? Okay. Isn't it? There. there it is. Okay. Thank goodness. Oh, and holy cow, thank you for the very thoughtful, very kind message. Captain Big Nose, I appreciate that. And uh, it's great to have you here. Thank you for be being part of this community. Thank you for that uh, very heartfelt message. I appreciate it. I'm glad you're here. Uh, Izzy wants to know what is the separator. So we're going to use paper towels as our separator. You'll see in a minute. We'll, we'll show you and I'll walk you through the process. This is great. I did not think I was going to be doing a jacketing stream this early in the season. This is, uh, this is pretty excellent. Yeah, let's do a little bit of walking around before we get the uh, the jacket and go. Uh, so we've got some clouds overhead right now. This is kind of why I didn't bother to set up the, uh, the solar panels yet. It's so much cloud cover here, it comes and goes. And Murph says, how would you guys remove those sandstone colored boulders if you could dig deeper? We would have to get an excavation permit for that. But um, we're here at the top of a hill, and so gravity is in our favor. Like Nick and I were talking about earlier, we might just use like a pry bar or a piece of 2 by 4 or something to knock these over and slide them down the hill. Um, we could use ropes to try and do that. Yeah, but we're lucky in that, you know, we're high up on the hill there. Gravity could do most of that work for us once we actually get those things moving. But we're not going to worry about that right now, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Acorn says you don't have to wait long for the glue to dry before jacking it. No, it, it's pretty dry out here. The stuff sets pretty quickly. You'll see the plaster also dries pretty quickly too, which is nice. It's nice to not have to wait around for that. On a really cold morning, 
Plaster can take a long time to cure. Um, sometimes it feels like the hotter it is, the faster it sets up, uh, the faster it dries. That's probably true. Um, it's an exothermic reaction. But yeah. I think I'm going to take this opportunity to finish my sandwich that I was eating earlier. Drink some water. Crumpled peanut butter sandwich. But needs sustenance. So let's get that. And Fedora Source, thank you so much for the 21 months of support. Appreciate that very much. stuff. <laughs> Moonrise Rabbit, thank you for those five gift subs. <laughs> you know how much I appreciate that. Thank you very much for your generosity. Thanks for supporting this community. Appreciate that. Yeah. And Quinn got one. Excellent. All right, beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Thank you, Moonrise Rabbit. I appreciate you sharing the the dino <laughs> goodness. Thank you, Dark Tarkonis. Appreciate that. <laughs> Mouth is full of peanut butter. But thank you. Seriously. Or thought about that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, love me a Prime gift sub. Or a, a Prime sub. Good stuff. Thank you, Jordy Fish. Thank you very, very much. Holy cow. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> nice rabbit. I'm not going to corral the rest of this crew into singing Johnny Cash's dinosaur song. A, they don't know it. B, <laughs> I'm the, the streamer here. You know, I'm not going to embarrass anybody else that like that. No, so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Hm. Thank you, Truckhorn. Tier 2 sub for 12 months. Holy cow. Truckhorn, thank you very, very much. Yeah. Um, oh, and Lenina, you might be able to ask Quinn. Is Quinn here in chat right now? Was it Fossil Man Quinn? You should see. See if you can ask him yourself. But he's got plenty of music recommendations for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... And Max Ding, yes, indeed, yeah. Bag, uh, yeah, Ceratopsian Frill. Ouch, I feel like there's bugs biting the back of my calf right now. Uh, yeah, get, get the whole surface. Uh, hmm. <laughs> Quinn, you are here watching the stream. Well, hello, Quinn. How are things going over there? <laughs> Quinn must have uh, data over there. Good service on his phone. Quinn Lenina, one of our most stalwart of moderators, she was asking if you had any musical recommendations for her. Any groups that maybe she hasn't heard of that you really like. Um... She'd love to know. Yeah. 
What kind of stuff do you like, Lenina? Just to give Quinn an idea of uh, of what he might recommend to you. <laughs> hmm. I'm going to reuse this bag as much as I can. I'm going to see if I can use the same plastic gallon bag every day for my sandwich for the next two weeks. Um, we try and conserve things as much as we can around here. Um, because, yeah, yeah. We got all this money from uh, from generous benefactors, many of whom are watching right now. We want to make sure that goes as far as it can, you know? Um, we're very grateful for the support, but we want to make sure that we also pinch every penny to whatever extent is reasonable. And uh, reusing plastic bags like that, perfectly reasonable. I'm going to put this back in my rucksack. have an apple also. Yeah. And thank you, Stink, for the five gift subs. I really appreciate that. That is excellent. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and I agree, Jim, yeah. Single-use plastic. No bueno. Yeah. Um, let me put the sticker somewhere where I won't lose it. Don't want that blowing away. Hmm. The jacketing process. Is there only one brush here? Mm. There's more brushes around somewhere. Danny, you have any brushes lying around? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's one up here. It's hiding. Yeah. So, right now, uh, Ethan and Nick are going to apply a layer of separator here. I think I'll go ahead and narrate this so they can focus. paper towel goes on there as a separator between the rock and the bone, well, between the rock and bone combined and the plaster that goes on top. Yeah, high-tech stuff. Paper towel or, for any UK viewers, kitchen roll. Dragonflies and butterflies on there. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, obviously, like the plaster, if you just put plaster straight up against the bone, it'll stick to the bone. You can't get the jacket off, yeah. obviously. So the separator layer is, is necessary to create, obviously, as the name suggests, a clean, clean separation between the plaster and burlap of the jacket and the bone itself. So we, we want it to go into the jacket and then come back out of the jacket. Other, other materials you can use are tinfoil, uh, mm -hmm. toilet paper, 
you know, kind of... Newspaper. Yeah. Newspaper is one of the ones you'll see in old jackets, like in the old collections from Barton Brown. And yep. Which is kind of cool, because if the jacket isn't properly labeled or anything, you can often date yeah. that jacket just based on the dates on the newspaper, which yeah, is pretty okay. cool. Okay. That's the mud part. Gotcha. You can also date old quarries and stuff. If you're trying to relocate an old site and they use newspaper, you can look at the dates on the newspaper and figure out, yeah, uh, it couldn't have been prior to this date. <laughs> This is the time when they, the giant butterflies invaded, invaded <laughs> Earth. These were dark days. <laughs> and yeah, Acornica, it's just uh, water on the paper towels to kind of get them to conform to the shape underneath. You want a jacket to be as tight as possible to the surface of the bone. Because um, if you have any air pockets or anything in there, Stuff can jostle around inside, it can come apart, and that's not good when you're trying to transport it back to the laboratory. into the side so we don't have like a big uh, I was talking about having, having air pockets is not good so he's solving that problem right there make make do with what you got yeah I forgot to buy mud at Walmart so <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's just better when it's homemade. Made with love. Yeah. Usually we just do like one or maybe two layers of separator for whoever was asking that. Yeah. There's, uh, oh shoot, there there's a sheath there. Where's the knife? I don't know. Mm. I haven't been here for a while. Maybe look behind you, Nick. I th think I left mine. Oh, is there one under the... Look under the plaster bucket. There it is. Yeah, yeah there nice. it is. Nice. Thanks. <laughs> there's somebody like on Dora the Explorer or something. Everybody in, at home watching is going, It's under the plaster bucket! <laughs> Look under the plaster bucket. <laughs> Barnum, no brownie. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we were talking about Barnum Brown earlier. Some of you may or may not recognize that name, but... He's probably most well known for uh, discovering Tyrannosaurus Rex. There's a biography of Barnum Brown that I'm, uh, well, I, should, I haven't really had time to read it recently, but I started it right before I came out here, um, and it's entitled Barnum Brown, the Man Who Discovered Tyrannosaurus Rex. But uh, yeah, he was also nicknamed Mr. Bones. He was one of the the, the best known of American paleontologists, to the general public at least, in the early 20th century. Worked for the American Museum of Natural History, and he came out here to this very area back in the 1930s. Was it 37? Indeed. Yeah. And he never actually published on any of the dinosaurs that he dug up from here. Um, he found some good stuff, but still no dinosaurs published from this formation, the almond formation. Yeah. Not to be confused with the macadamia formation. <laughs> yeah, and the uh, the pistachio supergroup. Exactly. Okay. 
Looking pretty good. I think so. I don't see any gaps that I do. Maybe, maybe one around here, because the, the epi might go pretty close to that edge. Then I think we should call it. Okay. Oh, Spartan, holy cow, thank you for the 34 months of support. Holy cow. That's like almost as long as I've been streaming. Thank you again, Spartan. There's a reason you got that founder badge there. Very nice. Yeah. 34 months. That's almost a whole year. Okay. So, we'll uh, sweep all this dirt out of the edges so that when we're setting the, the strips in, we're not you're picking up a bunch of rocks with us and slapping gotcha. it onto the block. So we'll get the surface clean and then we'll, we'll get in there. Ethan, how many jackets do you think you've made so far in your career? I have no idea. Uh, between, I don't know, Depends, it depends if you define those little gypsonas as jackets. <laughs> if so, then probably hundreds, but... Yeah. Probably between 30 and 100? I really don't know. Yeah. 100, 100 is probably pushing it. Maybe 50? I don't really know. Off the top of my head, what do you think you've done? Probably something around the same. Yeah. More than a few. It's... <laughs> I don't know how, how I would answer that question. It's not for me, for me to ask you. <laughs> I do have a jacket journal at home. A jacket journal? Yeah, where I record every jacket I've ever... <laughs> of course, yeah. Take pictures and, and selfies with all of them. Yeah, I name them. <laughs> I measure their heights on the wall with the pencil. <laughs> Take them to the surface. Cool, we're looking pretty good. Yeah. It's mostly like medium to large size. Oh, there go the paper towels. That's okay. We don't need them. Uh, running, running. Um, oh, and Spartan wants to know if I got the package uh, before I left. I ended up leaving like a day later than I thought I was going to, and it's good that I did because I think I got the package. Was that the one with the Geiger counter in it? Because holy cow, if that was you, Spartan, that is extraordinary. I wasn't going to use your real name. I don't want to dox anybody, but. Um, yeah. Uh, was that you with the the rain poncho and the Geiger counter and the uh, the music stand? Yes, I did get it. Thank you so much, Spartan. Holy cow, is that incredibly generous of you? And I want you to know I appreciate that tremendously. Yeah. We're gonna be using that Geiger counter, uh, seeing if any of our Cedar Mountain dinosaurs are radioactive to any detectable level. We're gonna need more water. Later in the summer. I've got more water if you need it. How much you got? Um, go into the, my bag. There's Here, I'll get it. But I've got like maybe half that size. Uh, All full. Like, more than that. More than that. Uh, hmm. Uh, Sorry. This water's also pretty granular. enough? I don't know. I think, I mean, this is a lot of... We do, we do, yeah, I'll go grab it. Okay. Sorry for the delay. Yeah, no worries. Alrighty, I'm trying to think what else we can do in the meantime. You know what, let's just, it's just a top jacket. Let's just get this over with. We'll come back and get another layer if it's not enough tomorrow. Okay. Okay, we have two strips of burlap we need to cut, right, in this bag. Stand up here, some out of the way. Will you guys need another set of hands, you think? Should I set this down? Um, I don't know. Okay. I don't know yet. Okay. But, uh, is that the burlap down there? Yeah. So. There's extra plaster in there also. Uh, let me take a swig and then you can use the rest of it, yeah. Okay. I might have a little left over in my camel bag, too. Cool. Need my, uh, big buck knife that I, that was up here when I left to cut this with. Alright. Sawtooth edge. I'll put the rest of this in here. Thanks, man. Yeah. You know I'm Contribution to the cause.
pick up everything and clean up everything anyways. So we'll just yeah. So we can all the tools together. And, and I can start doing that too if you guys want to work on the jacketing. Well, we need to do some water. Sure. The hero. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, Quinn. <laughs> Norm. Do you have that saw on you? The saw blade? Uh, no. I don't have my knife either. Um, What's my knife? Hey, baby. Oh. Let's see. We do have some knives floating around. Are they going to be sharp enough for the water? burlap? Yeah, I heard on the stream that you need more water. <laughs> <laughs> nice work, Quinn. One of our listeners has <laughs> all this way to support us. Knife? On you. Nice, dude. There's another one floating around that's serrated on the other yeah, end. That's, that's mine. That's, yeah. I left it here when I went to town and it's disappeared. So, uh, it's, uh, it's floating around somewhere. It's here. Uh, I just used it uh, earlier on some roots. There we go. Here. Hi, Jack Stuff. <laughs> there, I should remember to put those scissors in my field bag because. That could be really helpful in a situation like this. The knife is nice, but scissors are... Does the trick just fine. Yeah. Sorry. You're good. I've, uh, I've actually never used scissors, I don't think. Do you have really? like, Are they pretty sharp? Do they do the, do the trick? Yeah. Nice. We used to keep scissors in all our field bags, not just for uh, the burlap strips, but also for cutting roots. Oh, nice. And for cutting uh, little plaster strings off of jackets after root. Probably cut this in half again, just so that it's not flopping anywhere. <clears throat> Long ways. Down the middle. Yeah. Well, you're a little closer. Nice. That's a good size. Seam on there. No, I think it's good, huh? Okay. Corral Adam and Fisher after this. And Adam's in the truck. Oh, yeah. Y'all should probably get out of here. Though. I'm good for him. I'm gonna ride in the trunk bed. I don't know. I mean, the, the trunk is completely full, so that's true. I think the Fisher kind of wants to see the jacket too. It's busy up there. Nice. Both work. Alright, let's put it down the middle lengthwise again. Just like this guy. Hot dog style.
excuse me. Oops, I need to be over here. I need to be done eating that apple. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, <laughs> and the core on that was bigger than a long time, I promise. <laughs> yeah. Can you find a gallon bag? Nice, there's one. Potentially. Yeah! This is holding all the other baggies. You can just stuff that in a small pocket then. We've got a dead fly in our plaster water. Always a good sign. And fossilized into that Ethan, Nick and I were talking about this earlier. Um, how we both learned that you're supposed to soak the burlap first. That's how we were trained. Uh, before you actually mix the plaster in and then apply the pl plaster to the burlap. But I know that like Jim and Don don't do that. Who's we? You and Nick? Yeah, like gotcha. we both independently learned that. Yeah, I've, with seen, different crews. I've seen that with one. I saw that with an Argentine gentleman uh -huh. at the LA Museum. That's the only time I've ever seen it done. Yeah, we always did that with MOR. We called, called it making burlap tea at the beginning because the water gets all brown. Oh, that's cute. And then you dare the other crew members to drink, drink it. Yeah. I bet that's really yummy. <laughs> I've done it before. It's like... I'm just thirsty enough. Yeah. I've also been thirsty enough to sip it, at least. It's very earthy tasting. Kind of tastes like a like a wet dog smells. It's not great. It tastes like a wet dog. <laughs> I think so. I mean, we could throw this one that in should, there. That get, uh, I'm happy for that to go in the same bag. Yeah, it's not, no one's going to confuse this as going with that at all times. Yeah, they're pretty different colors. Turning lobster pink, which is a good sign. Yeah, me too. Jeez. My arms. It was so cloudy recently that I completely forgot about sunscreen this morning. Yeah. I, don't, I really don't think we need uh, four people here. I think it's probably wise to get... Adam back to camp because he's probably dehydrated and sad. In a good, sad in a good way, not a, not proper sad. But just <laughs> um, and we, I suppose we, it's possible for us to move stuff from my truck into his to fit you in the trunk. I mean, yeah. Or we could take stuff out of my back seat and put it in the trunk, which would that'd work. We could do that. Well, we can take you with us if you need. Yeah. Um, I don't know what Fisher wants to do, but yeah, we should get him over here. Careful, there's a little fragment, huh? That's worth saving. <laughs> I did kind of want to get my hands wet and dirty, but... Come get wet. <laughs> one of the... I'm nice and plaster. One of the plaster. You're right, squad. Oh, good, okay. It's cheaper than the liquid. <laughs> it look, looks pretty pricey. It looks nice, but... Yeah. It feels nice. It tells the time perfectly. <laughs> it's incredible. You want this just in your bag? That'd yeah. be terrific. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's so funny the thing that the things that Twitch chat gets really, really concerned about. No sunscreen, oh my goodness. It's like it happens sometimes, you know? You get too pumped. Yeah. We got too psyched on the top. Too eager to get out here. And now we're never gonna be able to tan again. I usually just keep sunscreen in my bag, but I got a new bag. Fair skin lads. Okay. <laughs> so you don't want me to get burned. Well I'm gonna be I, brown in a couple days probably. Oh really? Uh well, with I'm usually like a nice golden brown by the end of the summer. <laughs> yeah, I burn first. <laughs> I, I'm never just straight tan. I really? just burn first, yeah. then tan. So All right. Good. Fresh bag. Fresh. All right, Quinlan. Let's get gooed up. I go. Can you start pouring this in there, and I'll mix it? So this is kind of a critical time. Once you get the uh, the plaster into the water, the clock is ticking. It's going to start to react with that, and uh, it'll be dry before too long. So really got to have everything in place uh, when, when they have that here. Ethan's a pro. Hold up. 
we're at skim milk right now. We're trying to get to half and half. Let's go a little more. Okay, that should be good for a minute. Let's just let's give it a sec. I'm gonna work it in and we'll give it a minute to see what's see what's what. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Nick, can you pack some mud into that crevice? See that sure. next to the piece we glued on a minute ago. Some, but here I can just right here. Yeah. Buy mud at Walmart. <laughs> I think it's probably easier to dig it out. Okay, let's get a little more. I think I think one more glob and of more dirt or this that with plastic. Hey, one little, little more. Ba boom! Once we start uh, putting the burlap in, we're gonna want that bag out of here. Yeah. So once I decide that it's enough, I'm not totally sure yet, but just so we don't knock it over. If you guys need me to move anything too, don't hesitate to ask. Trying to make mud there? Or? Oh, I'm just trimming the jack a little bit. Okay, maybe sweep all that out then before we get this in there. What was that? Let me start rolling up the burlap. Uh, yeah, I think I think so. Okay. I think we can. Let's let's do it. It's starting a little thicker. It's probably be like a little bit of little bit thin or a little medium <laughs> thickness, but I think it should do the job. So yeah. That's the thing too, if you pre-soak the burlap strips in water, you have to make the mix thicker because the water in the burlap dilutes it a little bit. Okay, so we'll take this all part of the calculus. Oh, nice. Well, actually, I have to do that in the bucket. Oh, right, right, right. Hand it to you like that. So once you put, just a reminder, once you set the burlap onto the paper towel, you cannot lift it again because the paper towel will come off with it. So you have to set it down not very taut. Otherwise, if it's super taut, it's going to start lifting the burlap off. So. Every bag they had. Nice, very nice. <clears throat> we were looking at the text on it earlier. It's like, oh, safe for birds. <laughs> what Great. the heck? <laughs> bird food. <laughs> I get all my bird food at Home Depot. All my <laughs> bird food plaster. Sacks. Yeah. Oh yeah, hear that? That's the noise you want. <laughs> if there's no liquid in your mixture, <laughs> no dinosaurs coming out. These are the pro tips. Yep. I hope everybody appreciates this watching right now. This is uh, this is some top tier stuff. It's a beautiful temperature. The lighting is nice. Cool fossil. Cool friends. Cool day. Yeah. Cool yeah. weather. A little hungry, but other than that, you didn't stop and get. I've got some granola again. bars and stop stuff left over. Another McChicken. <laughs> Let me know if I should pop a granola bar in your mouth. Ooh, directly into my just the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Uninjured Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> he passed away, asphyxiated on a granola bar while jacketing the ceratopsian. It's not a bad way to go out. He died doing what he loved, <laughs> choking on a granola bar. <laughs> Probably a little 
thinner than I'd like, but it's too late. But it's my fault. Okay. This means you've got some extra time for... Yeah. So I figure I'll... I don't know, Danny, would you set it down when it's pretty thin, or would you just wait for it to thicken up a little bit? Um... We don't have like a lot of sides to cover necessarily, so yeah. As long as there's no like overhangs or anything, yeah, you're probably okay. Right on. Like I think I'll probably set all these. Trying to move. Yeah. And then we can all rub them in together. Okay. No. Help me out. Nice. Okay. All right. Now critical moment. <clears throat> this is my favorite part. These strings. Smoothing it out right there, making sure it's making contact with the separator. So set them down, and then we'll start working it all. Okay. So it's a messy process. We it end sure up with is. all kinds of little drips and drabs all over the place. It's often how you can relocate an old site is uh, you'll find bits of plaster there. It's really tough to clean them all up when you leave a site. Everybody's really enjoying this, guys, so... Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> the goo. This is the real deal here, everybody. This is not Dinosaur Fossil Hunter, the game. This is, uh... Not to throw shade or anything. This is too Lovely cool. little game. But this is the real deal. Alright, and then tomorrow we'll come back and we'll do her right. Do her how she deserves. <laughs> Alright, everybody hop in and... Mud Town. Once that's yeah, right yeah. On. Wait for it to goop up. All right, start start working on those air pockets. Maybe move the move the bucket for now, so we can get it up close, and just start working this stuff. So we want it to touch the side. We want it to adhere to the side. Spread out all the edges. A little thinner, but it should. It's all right for a first coat. <laughs> Paleontology, it's a hands-on science. If anybody gets an itch or anything on their <laughs> nose, let me know and oh, I can... Now I do. <laughs> Dang it, now that you said it. <laughs> uh, if anybody needs some water. Right, let's start getting some, some uh, liquid because this is pretty dry. I don't want this to be too tight. Okay, this is starting to thick up. Sweet. You want to nice. bring that over now and then we'll start getting goops going? This is nice thickness now. Gojira wants to know, to conceal it from prying eyes, can you dirty it up? Uh, we'll, we'll bury it once it's dry. Yeah. We'll make sure this thing's nice and covered so that... Because we are visible from the road here. Okay. So again, this is why that layer of separator was so important. Because this stuff, yeah, it just gets everywhere. That's why wetting the paper towel is important too, because it. Focus on the sides too. Get to make sure the sides are adhering. The plaster won't go through it if the paper towel was damp. Just let that go down. Just, just try to keep this, keep the pressure up right here. Sweet. It's going good. It's a good jacket. Yeah. Nice work, guys. These are kind of hard to screw up, so. <laughs> but I still feel proud whenever they work. Any spots you need goop specifically there, Nick? Yeah, you got it. I don't know. I've seen some pretty lousy jackets. Yeah, I have, I have too. <laughs> Somehow people find a it's way. It's not, not that hard to screw up. Yeah. Surprisingly tricky to get the right ratio of plaster to water. Yeah. There's various techniques for doing that. Mm -hmm. like, uh, 
it's on, it's usually more way more plastic than you think. Yeah, because it's just like the ratio. It's like so much. Um, it takes so much plaster to meet the water. I think the the trick I was told is you kind of keep pouring the plaster in until it starts forming little islands in yeah, the water. Yeah, that's what I heard too. So that's one one approach. It works pretty good. From Uncle Don. <laughs> the blue. Don the blue. Don the blue. Turn that one up with material. <laughs> Another one. I don't know if it's true or not, but if you take water that you've already that's kind of got some plaster in it that you've previously used it's dirty if you try and throw plaster in it'll kind of screw it up somehow it, it makes it set faster yeah okay yeah most if you use hot water yeah it makes it set up faster too Which so we've done that in the field like just leave it in the sun or like mm -hmm. uh set it down on top of some tin foil yeah <laughs> so it radiates the light yeah and uh well, it usually like chemically heats it watch up, it, watch it, I mean, yeah. watch it, which mm -hmm. is pretty interesting. It's an exothermic reaction, right? Yeah. We don't want to see any of the little burlap bubbles poking through. We gotta make sure everything is soaked. Although it's just thin enough, we might have to cope with some little burlap bubbles. Oh, well, Izzy is correct. Yeah, we. Uh... This is the first plaster jacketing ever done on Twitch, I bet. Wow. Hmm, that's funny. It's probably the first paleo fieldwork ever done on Twitch. Obviously. Really? Centuries from yeah. now, they will have a plaster jacketing. <laughs> it's coming together. Skippy the Klingon, I'm glad you're here. Welcome, welcome. It's good to have you. Speaking of Klingons, uh -huh. when these harden up, these little stringy things, we call these Klingons. <laughs> Gotta try to chop them oh, off. We, we would always call them plaster strings. Klingon's a much better name. Yeah. I like that a lot. <laughs> yeah, they can get really sharp though, especially if you use like some of the harder blasters like Hydro Gal mm. or something. That's one mm -hmm. of the reasons why we're actually rubbing it, is so that we don't have like these yeah. this topography of sharp plaster forming, because we have to carry this thing. Yep. So we don't want to get cut open when we're because it happens, yeah. It happens, yeah. It's sharp and often not ideal, mate. <laughs> also, I've got to be careful not to kick any dirt onto it because it'll just yeah. turn into little spikes when it gets into the plaster. I'll smooth it up, make it smooth, tight, and sexy. That was always our phrase with Museum of the Rockies. Tight and white. <laughs> Tighty whitey. What's that? Oh, this edge was kind of flopped down around Yeah, the... we'll get another coat for the imperfections tomorrow. But... Yeah, but I was thinking like if we want to trench down, it might make it difficult if we got to lip around yeah, it. Anywhere. We, we, we can also saw that off once it's hard. But yeah, not ideal for sure. Well, it is also better for jacket art too, Wilvedek, you're right. Yeah. Are we going to do any jacket art on this, you think? For sure, yeah. I mean, I'm going to draw probably my mom. <laughs> With an anchor and a heart. <laughs> and I'll draw a ceratopsian, what it probably looked like. Yeah. In its native environment. I think I, I brought some paint markers, so. Really? Uh, Sharpies usually, you know, they just get you wanna torn to shreds when you. I thought you're just making little mountains there. So if you like keep your palm together, it's like a little better. At, um, yeah, keep your fingers together. Keep your fingers closed. Like yes. Yeah. Well, this is going well. Yeah, it's nice chat. Thanks, everybody. Look how much, uh, <laughs> we got so much goo down here. Yeah. Jacketing ASMR. And every time you take your hand off, you're creating more little ridges. So you want to just keep going like this. Alright, let me see if we get it off. Pretend you're a Zamboni, just going over the top of it. This is a good jacket. Yeah. It's nice and sturdy. It's starting to get a little thicker. All right, I feel it. I feel it changing. A change gonna come. <laughs> oh, yes it is. I was born by the river. In a little jacket, <laughs> and I since been running. This is a good one. Cool. 
Ooh. My bad. Ooh. Max Ding wants to know, probably not a single molecule of the original Ceratopsian find in there. Uh, Ceratopsian uh, in there, right? I think most of the bone is... Yeah, probably original. Actually, original bone. Yeah. yeah. Fossilization is not... Not everything gets replaced. It's like a good portion of the original critter is... You know, the actual bone is in there. Because bone is not... I mean, it is produced by biology, right? It's produced yeah. by cells. It's like an extracellular matrix. But it is just a mineral, basically. Mm -hmm. It's well, just a, a crystal lattice so that... That, that mineral can stay around for a very long time. It's almost like a rock. Yep. Sweet. Look at this. It's somewhat debated, but there's been arguments that there is original organic material in the Southeast Dinosaur Bones as well. Mm -hmm. and yeah. People have tried to reconstruct uh, protein sequences from dinosaur bone. Mm -hmm. And again, that's debated, but there's probably at least at least like things like amino acids and things like that that may go back to the, um, you know, some of, these, some of these organic molecules can be stable over incredible periods of time. Like there are meteorites from four and a half billion years ago that have organic molecules in them from the formation of the solar system. <laughs> and uh, so at least some organic molecules. Organic as in carbon based. Carbon based right? molecules yeah. are likely to survive in there. But, you know, exactly what's surviving there, how it's surviving, things like that, that's something they're kind of still actively researching. Okay, we're getting toward uh, the point of, point of diminishing returns here. Yeah. Almost. It's getting pretty looking good. This is a very juicy good. jacket, yeah. guys. Yeah. Looking good. Nicely right. done. I'm going to do one more orbit. Beautiful. Whoop. Good job. <laughs> we just get stuck. Okay, now empty your, clean your hands over the bucket so we don't get more trash. Nice work, fellas. Yeah, very nice indeed. That's a nice one. Wow. I'm so excited that everybody got to see this right now. Holy cow. Um, Thanks for watching. Yeah, yeah. I think with that... This might be the only type specimen that was filmed being collected. Potential type specimen. Uh, live streamed, I'd say for probably. Sure, yeah. For sure live streamed, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. If this had like gone wrong somehow, he'd broken or something. <laughs> like, Turn it off. Yeah, now. exactly. Pull the plug. Delete Wait, the vod. This isn't live, is it? <laughs> uh, this is all, you didn't see anything. This is all staged. This is how it would have happened if he broke it in uh -huh. the field. <laughs> this is a dramatic reenactment. Dramatic yeah. reenactment. Don't do as Donnie Don't does. <laughs> uh, yeah. You, you kind of have to. I don't know. Well, you know I think somebody has to kind of do this on film when he could screw it up, I suppose, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, right I appreciate you guys being such good sports. Try to do it over okay. here so we don't create more trash. Success, y'all. Yeah, can we get some applause for paleontologists here? Um, W's in the chat. Yeah, <laughs> Quinn knows. Yeah. Um, it's not easy to do stuff on camera, so again, guys, I really appreciate this. This is a, what a wonderful outreach opportunity, and I'm sure everybody watching learned something, so. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. We're getting a lot of applause in the chat. Um, everybody's very appreciative, everybody. Thanks, y'all. Yeah. Thanks for all the support. Let's see. And, uh, yeah, 302 viewers right now. Wow. Holy cow. It's more than I usually get. Um, let's see who else is on Twitch right now, and we'll see if we can do a raid and go ahead and wrap this thing up. So, who else is on? Mm-hmm. Life is good. Agreed. Yeah, life's good when you've got good people and good dinosaurs. Let's see. Oh, did you give Lenina some music recommendations? I told her Oh, nice. Yeah. That's hilarious. Let's see. Oh, let's go right into Paleo Stream. Yashua Gnupe, a paleo artist, is on right now. Let's uh, let's go right into him. Uh, flash raid, paleo stream. There we go. Excellent. So we probably want to, I assume you want to go down a bit more tomorrow. For sure. Yeah, it's too shallow. And let's see. My channel chat. There we go. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. Well, everybody, the paleontology doesn't stop here. We're going to be tuning in, raiding in, to Paleo Stream's channel. We'll see what he's working on. He's a very talented paleo artist from Germany. And uh, he's got, I think, like 15 people watching right now. So it's going to be quite the raid. Oh, and here comes the, ramp, the, uh, see the wind. Yeah, bye-bye, everybody. Thank you again. And, uh, Thanks for your support. Yeah. Be well. Until tomorrow. Yep.
All right, let me go ahead and stop the stream.